What up, people? My name is Lewis Lee from All Ends Media, and this is Playing in Traffic. And I'd like to welcome everybody that's in the chat room and everybody on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And uh, we're getting people jumped in the chat room. We got Hi Jim, Brian, Chassie John, Scott. What's good? Before we get started, I'm going to share my screen and show you a couple things that uh, Plan and Traffic has going on. Hold on one second. All right, this is our Plan and Traffic website. So if anybody wants to go check it out, it's planandtraffic.com. And uh, this is where you can find all the information about us and what we do and who we play with. And we also have a podcast where you can listen to it in your car, radio, wherever. And you can watch the replays on YouTube. So you can go to the website and get to that stuff. I'm going to keep, uh, keep adding um, stuff. We have four years worth of uh, content. So I just got to get on it and keep putting it on. Then we got Motor Mouth Radio with Ray. Corino. Let's see if he's in the chat room yet. Nope. But uh, if you go to our website, you can click on, on uh, Motor Mouth Radio and get to their website and see all the things that they're doing out of New York. And then we have our social media sites. Uh, let's see. And here is our Plan and Traffic YouTube channel. So if you go there, you can uh, see all the the previous videos, you know, we had a we had a pretty good selection going on. So you can watch the videos, and um, when you're there watching the video, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell, so that'll help us um, notify you when we are doing something something special. Okay, we got Ray. We we'll get him in. Yeah, so uh, if anybody has any comments on things that you would like us to do or or any um or anybody you want us to have on the show, just uh you know, hit us in the chat room or email and I will try to make it happen. Hey Ray, how's it going? Who are we playing in traffic with tonight? You there? <laughs> hey Ray. Ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh I was just showing everybody the different websites, the YouTube channel and the and the website. Nice. Uh, and I showed them how they can get to your uh, humble abode. Yeah. Oh, there we are. This is me and Joe. Those foxes. Yeah. Uh, there we are. Yep. We got a we got a link directly to your website. Yes, and so do we. We uh, we link right back to to your entities. We had a uh, and we had I followed up last week uh, with Dave Hayes. We had him on the show on Sunday. Oh, great. How'd it go? You know, it was great. I mean, I I assume, I mean, for me, it was just a repeat of Thursday nights. It was all the same questions and the same answers. You know, it's kind of, mm -hmm. you got to kind of make believe you didn't hear it before. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure the people that, that listened really enjoyed it because he's a great guest. Dave yeah, he really, fantastic. he's a good dude too, man. He, um, yeah. when I got to see him, he had, a, he had some gifts for me. Uh-huh. You know, he's a good dude. He had some hats for me. I, nice. I, I had a hat that has, um. It has wings on it with a spark plug in the middle. And it was one of my favorite hats, man. And he found one for me. And well, that's where you got it. Okay. I remember I remember yeah. you going through that whole thing. Yeah, we were talking about that metal forming tool that he had mentioned. And we spoke about it a little bit at length on the radio show. And I mentioned that I have a couple projects I wanted to do. And I was going to use dimple dies, which are, uh, it's a round die. Mm -hmm. And what it does when it makes the hole, instead of just a perfectly round hole, it rolls the edge of the hole over. So you've seen it like when they do, um, you know, like aircraft seats and whatever, they'll do mm -hmm. the sides of the seats like that. Yeah. So it's a nice finished look. So, you know, you can buy a single die, but then it's like buying a single drill bit. They also sell a set of like five or six. So you think, well, if I need one, maybe I'll need another one. Mm -hmm. You know, but now you're buying a set of six, it's like $300. 
Right. And then you're thinking, okay, I'm going to use one. I'll probably never use the other five. So, <laughs> but you know what? It makes a really nice, nice uh, finish. And it's, oh. they're using it on a lot of different stuff, like under the under the hood, a lot of the panels. That's where I was going to use it. Yeah. So Dave was explaining to me this tool that he was coming out with that he told us about last week. It will do essentially the same thing, but you do it by hand. That it's kind of like a can opener. And you can do it, you can make ovals in different shapes. You're not just stuck with round. Mm -hmm. So um, I told him, yeah, when you get that thing in production, let me know. I definitely want one of those. I'm gonna I'm gonna play around with that. So yeah, yeah. he said he'll send me one. So that'd be cool. We'll do some follow-up on that. Yeah. Chassis John told me I should get uh Trump on. I'll give him a call and see what he says. Yeah, right. <laughs> he may be a little busy. Yeah, you know, I, I might be able to get Eric on. He uh I, I transported one of his cars um, a long time ago. This is probably 06, 07. Mm -hmm. he, he has um, a 69 Camaro. Oh, nice. and, and he bought up a couple donor cars. So I uh -huh. shipped them over to him in New York. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. You never know. You yeah, never I have to, know. Reach out to reach out to his people and see if I can get through his people and her people and his, you know, <laughs> the whole group. Yeah, you may find that at this stage of the game, like, you know, when you're in politics at that level, you kind of isolate yourself from other things. I mean, I know, case in point, the last county executive we had, I mean, he's just a, he's just a guy that ran the county that I live in. He wasn't, you know, the governor mm -hmm. or anything. But I tried getting him on my show, and he wanted to do it because he's a car guy. Well, he's got a, he's got a Corvette, but he, he calls himself a car guy. He's a, he's an, an enthusiast. Dude, he's, not, yeah. he's not a wrench. You know, he doesn't get dirty. But whatever. So I, and he liked the idea of coming on, and every time I went through him or what, or his guy, uh, they kept asking the same questions like you know when, where, what, like um, mm -hmm. you know what, what what time do you tape it? Like no, we don't tape it. We're live on the air, and right. I wanted him in the studio, and they always had something else to do. So like four or five times of blowing me off nicely, I said, all right, screw this. You know they're, they're just too busy. Yeah. And at one point, I had a conversation with him, and it and it came down to. I realized what it was with all of, there's always stuff going on with government and you know no matter what level it's at and, and there's always turmoil they were afraid that once we got him in the studio not knowing us personally were we going to sandbag him we're going to howard stern him you know we're going to like yeah. throw him under the bus or or uh, you know you know get him in a position a predicament where in a live venue they didn't want to be at right. and that's why they wouldn't do it because even though they and you know they checked us out through other people because we knew people that knew them and everybody, I'm sure gave us a good uh, you know an okay, and they still wouldn't do it and and now go up to Trump's level and you got to be thinking like geez man you don't want to look yeah. at anybody yeah so yeah you never know I mean they probably had some bad experiences oh well, you know you don't want to put yourself in that position is what it is you know yeah. I mean uh, they can certainly handle themselves but you don't want to have to. Because you don't know what's coming at you, you know. It's the, right. that's, you know, that's like we've had a couple. We've had things on on this show where people did things where we were like, "Whoa!" I know I've said, like, "Whoa, man, where'd that come from?" <laughs> yeah. Wait, and, wait, hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> and we've had it live on. Yeah, I mean, a couple of years ago, my last co-host and I, we were actually pranked by Howard Stern's people. Oh yeah. And they pranked us repeatedly. It was like every other week for like you know for a number of times. And it gets you to the point where you see the we have a light that lights up to let us know there's a phone call. You see that light, and like we were looking away from it, like we were trying to make believe, like no, there's no light, there's no light, because you don't know what's on the other side, you know. Yeah. When you go live to air, you're out there. You know? Yeah. But yeah, we got sure. through it. We did it. Those guys are pros, man. They're good. They are pros. Yeah. They've been doing it a long time, man. Oh yeah. And I, and I have I have copies of the recordings because they did it on like the best of shows. That was one of the their best of bits. Because we didn't play, we didn't, we didn't play. You know, we didn't, we didn't. You know, they want you to start cursing your head off and, and going nuts. And we didn't. We we stayed really cool. Yeah. To the point of sounding stupid, maybe. But when I listened to it back, their replay, uh, even after we hung up on them, they continued. They recorded their own audio, so it sounds mm. like the call went longer, but it really didn't. Like I know when it stopped, but oh yeah, you would think that they kept going. You know, and they were they're that good, man. Those guys are. I give them credit. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I want to show everybody this book I got from Stacy David. Oh, nice. Okay, you can go on his website. This is a planner for for your build. Man, this book is so sweet. I mean, 
it has it has everything in it, man. You, you know, you put your car information and I don't know if you can see it good. Put your car information, but then it goes through the whole build, man. After you're done, you know, putting all your stuff in, you'll know how much it's going to cost to build the car and all the parts and, and you know, you just keep track of everything. All right. The exhaust system. I mean, <laughs> that's it, great. Yeah, it's really a, a, a thorough book. He really put in some time, you know. I was using a small spiral notebook for my build, and I finally transposed everything into a loose leaf binder. Mm -hmm. And I have two sections. One of them was just parts that I was buying, and the other one was work that I did. And I figured this way, you know, it becomes like the biography of that car. Yeah. You, know, you could, you could, I mean, I'm not going to sell the car, so it can, it can go like my kids can do whatever they want to do with it bury it with me or bury you know with the car whatever they want to do i don't care but yeah. but now so the the point is someone can look through that and see exactly what was done and i mean it's not written as a story it's written as line items you know on this day i did this 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 and this but uh, that's the same idea i guess if you don't have an organization or a plan in mind that book will give it to you yeah i mean it, it'll let you know um before you get started i mean it's really even has pictures in the wait a minute. Like this is a transmission. I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually see the pictures. Oh yeah, yeah, I see transmission torque converter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the whole book's like oh, that. that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I someone mean, had to take the time to put that together. The pages look nice and thick too. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice, nice book. Very nice. Um. So is that going to be? Uh, the, is the cover going to say seventy-eight caddy? Yeah, yeah that's nice. what's in Nice, Mrs. Cosuela. Yes, very good. <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, anybody get a chance, go to um, what's his website? Hold on. I think it's stacydavid.com. I think so, yeah. I was going to say, I keep, I've always kept the sheet on the cars that I own just for maintenance, you know, for what I do uh, oil changes, tire rotations, any parts changed. Right. And, and, you know, I've saved them. And some of them I have, like, I, I literally like had a box, like an air filter box, or I had a carburetor kit box, and I just, mm -hmm. you know, ripped it open and just made it flat and, and wrote on the back of that. And, uh, you know, you look back on it sometimes and I mean, some is just mundane work, but it kind of just brings you back to that point in time. Cause you're looking at the dates like, wow, 85. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You just go back in time and you kind of relive it. So, I mean, a lot of people could care less, but. Well, you know, it, it is nice to be able to go look back and say, you know, when did I do this or that and what part, only thing, only thing I would suggest to him is he should put an envelope in the back for receipts. You know, you, you need a hell of an envelope. Yeah, well, that's true. I have a. <laughs> or, or maybe even warranty. I oh, this wow. this is one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you want to talk? You know, I mean, it, <laughs> it adds up, dude. It adds up. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh, Brian yeah. Brian says he don't want to know how much his final uh, price is. <laughs> I'll tell you the honest truth. I have a list of everything, you know, my parts and everything I've laid out. I've never totaled it. I just no. like, what's the difference? Who cares? It's yeah. like, you know, it's like Brian, perfect, perfect example. You know, Brian's a tool guy. We love love our tool guys. And I I, uh, I was on a tool truck a couple weeks ago, and I bought a, um, uh, what do you call it? It's a, a dead blow hammer. I walk back in the shop, and it's a big mother, you know. And the and the guy working in the shop, um, he's got to watch how he spends his. I mean, I should watch how I spend my money too. But he says, "Yeah, what'd you get?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got a new hammer." He's like, "Wow, man!" He goes, "I bought one of those at Harbor Freight, and you know what that what that cost you?" And I said to him, "I don't know." <laughs> he goes, I took it through my tool. I said, "I don't know. I didn't, I didn't ask." I said, "I want that, and you you got my credit card information. <laughs> I know you'll understand that, right?" And he looked at me like. Are you kidding me? How you, you just bought that without knowing what it cost? <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, because I wanted it. So, you know, it's like it's I want it, so I'm gonna use it, and that's it. End the story. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah, so you you don't don't look, you don't look. <laughs> you know, because then you put a value on something, and the value isn't really the money you spent, the value is intrinsic. The value, I mean, uh, well, with tools, that's one thing, that's something you but like on a car or a motorcycle or your, or your house, whatever you're putting money into. The value is in what you see it. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, it's only valued in your eyes. Can... Yeah, no one else is going to think it's worth that much. Right, right. You know, I mean, cars were. I don't know. You know, there's there's always a thought in the in the hobby. Uh, I used. I mean, a few years ago, I heard 
It's 35 cents on a dollar, 50 cents on a dollar. And I got Barrett Jackson on right now, and I'm looking. I just saw a beautiful car go across the lot. 17.5 for this 30 something coupe. And it, you couldn't build this car, I don't think, mm. for under 40. Really? You know, so for 17.5, talk about steal of the day. Holy crap. Man. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey, anybody in the chat room want to jump on the screen? Give me a thumbs up. Yeah. So I got something to show you, Ray. I don't, I don't know if you'll be proud of me or 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 uh, <laughs> laugh at me. <laughs> So is is if Brian's in there? See if he's a, see if Brian's around. If he'll come in, because I gotta I gotta talk to him about some tool stuff. But what if you spent money? I'm proud of you already. So, what'd you do? Oh no, I saw the pictures of your jacket. By the way, that leather oh, jacket. Did? Yeah, Thank it was you. on. Uh, what was it on Twitter? Or in, I think it was on Twitter, right? Yeah, I think I put it on Twitter. Nice, looking good. Thank like you, man. Uh, the male the male model was. He was, was sexy, right? Yeah, man, sexy <laughs> dude. Let me tell you. I tell you what, I, I got it all done, and the collar was real big. And I'm like, oh man, I hate this collar. I rode my bike, you know, one day. I'm like, I couldn't move my head. Right. So I, I came back, took it apart, and did redid the collar. Man, now I really love it. It's like perfect for me. Yeah, I have one of those jackets, and the collar is only, I'm gonna say maybe a little more than a half inch. Yeah. Not maybe not even five eighths. I mean, it's not because that's that, that's what you said. It'll it actually it'll dig your neck if you're not, uh, you know, prepared. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was hating it, man. I was like, oh, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good that you were able to do it yourself. That's excellent, man. It's, you build yeah. it and you rebuild it. So. Yeah, and I think um, that was kind of my trial coat, but it came out really nice. Good. So I think I'm going to make a black one, but I'm going to make one with vents in it, ah. you know, where, where the air will go through. Side panels. I like the way you did the black arm zippers. That was kind of nice. Nice contrast. Thanks. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it came out pretty, pretty. You know, from our first coat, it, it came out pretty good. Yeah, damn nice, damn nice. What's up, Brian? Hey, Jim? hey guys, how y'all doing? What's going Brian, on? Jim, hello, fellas. Hey, Jim, how are you? His mic's off. I got him. Hey, Brian, let me ask you a question. Shoot. Just saw something tonight. We got this. The guys at the shop, man, you're getting to be like a a, a cult classic favorite at, at the shop i'm at because because <laughs> i always talk about macro band they know that you know we you know we, we're dealing and stuff so um so now the tagline that we have is like the snap-on guy that we have we don't have a macro guy the snap-on guy we have he used to be a zone rep so he was like management and now he ended up taking a tool route so you know okay but he's he's a couple months younger than me the guy's no spring chicken he's not hungry he's not you know, I mean, he's he's a good tool guy, but he's not aggressive. You know, uh -huh. even with carrying the new stuff, I'm always because I find stuff online and ask him, "Hey, can you you got this?" He's like, "Oh no, man! Oh, you're watching those Maui guys again, or the guys from you know <laughs> Canada." <laughs> so, so what I'm always saying, I'm, my, the tagline is, "Yeah, you know what? I, I got a Maco guy can get us something. Or don't worry, we <laughs> <laughs> got a guy." So just tonight, something came up. It's a set of snap on. It was pumpkin carving tools of all things. It was just kind of. Uh. You know, and I so I, I sent a picture over to my buddy, and uh, and I said, yeah, I said, here's another set of tools that we we're not going to be able to get. I don't know if you can. They're just pumpkin carving tools. Yeah. Uh, you know, just different. This saw blade, <laughs> and they got like screwdriver handles. So I said, listen, I'll talk to the macro guy. I'll see if they have something <laughs> like that. I said, and if they do, we'll have them. So. Uh, not yet that I know of, but. We uh, are starting to get as bad as snap on with their marketing. I mean, that's good. Those guys, they put their name on toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? So uh, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. Now they do. And I'll tell you something, but in the past, they didn't. They really didn't. I mean, when I finally got back on the truck a few years ago, I was shocked. I mean, snap on, I'm seeing, you know, buy one, you know, buy one, get one deals. Like, what? Am I in a, am I in the wrong place? Like, I've never seen that. It was like, you pay us or. Mm -hmm or get get the hell out you know so well the, the market's changed a lot but i mean like yeah. we always have a buy one get one deal or um we had uh i don't know if you saw my post with our new black satin uh, ratchets uh, yeah the black satin stuff is gorgeous oh man and i mean it literally i walked into the place and i was we had a corny video at our meeting about hey walk in with the back bucket and you know they'll just throw you their old ones you know yeah. and it was kind of funny and literally i was done and i went through uh i went through my my case or my set and it was a half a day 
and I just had a whole bucket full of broken up ratchets. But it's crazy on how some of that stuff works or flies off the shelf. So yeah, yeah, nice. Oh, my dancing dogs! Did you see my dancing yeah. dogs? Yeah, the, the, the Bluetooth dancing. speaker. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> You know, I got a tool that can make your job easier, but I'll take the dancing dog for 25. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've seen that too. Like with the, I, with the, the snap on videos, I see there's a couple of guys I follow who do tool reviews. They do all, like this one guy in Canada does a snap on Friday. He does a Matt go Wednesday. I've sent you some of his stuff. Yeah. And he has a regular generic tool guy who comes around with gear wrench and, and other stuff. So he covers all the bases and he's brutally honest on, on what he likes and what he doesn't like. You know, the guy tells it straight. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just funny when you see all this, you know, the, the snap on a hot dog machine now and a popcorn and a gumball machine. Like, Jesus, what the hell is next, you know? <laughs> hey, it's going to be I, Amazon. I think I sold, uh, yeah, yeah I, know, I think I sold uh, three or four uh, refrigerators, little Maco refrigerators, like toolboxes. Right. It was crazy. Well, you know, that's the thing. Guys are, I, I've talked about this for years, you know, we're brand loyal no matter what it is. Whether it's a parts supplier, like, you know, if you like Delco stuff or if you like, you know, Borg water parts or, you know, and with certainly with tools and with, with a lot of things, we're very brand specific. So, yeah, if you can see something from your tool guy, that yeah, definitely, man. I, you know, we're yeah. on. And I can see how that stuff sells. These guys on the, on the tool reviews on, on YouTube are saying, you know, a lot of the, the, the tool deal said a lot of times that's the stuff that flies off the truck and the tools, is, no one's buying tools. They're buying the, the tchotchkes. But. I guess it's all good as well. I had I had a really hard time about I don't know seven years ago because you know I'm a tool I mean you know I'm a I'm a technician and I want the tool to do the job right. I don't have time for all those games and play things, but right. well, like I gotta, said, you got to put it on there. The customers do like we're, we're very brand loyal and we do like to av yeah we're advertising man yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> right. we, like, we advertise our stuff. So, Brian, I have a question for you. Yeah, I seen I seen a guy on YouTube, and he's doing car interior, and he's cutting foam with a snap-on yep. electric knife. Do it's you sell those? It's a carving knife. Yeah, it's a car a carving knife. Yeah. Uh, uh, we I don't know if that's coming or not. We have a whole bunch of uh, battery op uh, operated stuff coming. You know, battery mm -hmm. uh, stuff that's coming uh, for our next tool show in February. I think and this I was a cord cord one though. Uh, I know we're we're look, anything cordless. We're, they're not even going to invest the time in doing. It's all uh, battery right now. Yeah, yeah I, th I think the one that I saw, Lewis, I saw it on the truck. It, I, it was either like last Thanksgiving. Yeah, because I think it was a corded. Uh, carving knife, and I said, Oh my god, and he goes, Yeah, yeah. You see your wife I like this. and I said, You know what? We got one, we've been using one like a G, we've been using one for like you know, we got one like at our engagement party, it's like 32 years ago. I said, It's still working, so yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna go to um, <laughs> go to Home Depot or not Home Depot, what do you call it? Uh, Walmart, I know the yeah. one you've seen though, it's got a really long single blade, yeah. Right here. There you go, yeah, yeah, you could use that, sure, yeah, yeah. This is a battery. Actually, I had it on uh, for Thanksgiving on Instagram while I was carving the turkey with it. That's right. Oh, yeah? Did. Yes, that's right. I remember seeing that last year. So, you, but it, can you, you buy different size blades and stuff? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, let me know what that, those go for. I know this one. This one is really a, um, a, like a Sawzall. But I mm -hmm. think they're coming up. We also have like a finishing sander, and I think they're coming up with a, another knife type thing. Mm. Okay. But they don't really tell us what's coming, but I know they're doing a lot of uh, anything cordless now. I mean, you know, no, you know, not plug in battery is, mm -hmm. you know, that's what's coming. So right. they're supposedly flooding the market with that. Well, well, I picked up my seats. Oh, nice. These oh, yeah. are out of a uh, Grand Prix. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, nice. I gotta put some padding in it, and I'm trying to figure out what design I'm gonna do when I, you know, recover them. But mm -hmm. I think yeah. I'm gonna go with no headrest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's nice. that's on my that's on my uh, workbench right now. Yeah. 
I'm gonna say, Brian, you know, you still have a loyal following of old school guys because as, as long as everybody's buying the battery stuff, but here we are putting in orders for pneumatic air guns. You know, so, <laughs> it, it, it was funny because uh, uh, Monday I sold uh, six six uh, impacts. Did you uh, air? Wow. You know, and I was like dumbfounded. I walked out like I haven't sold. You know. But a lot of them were the new ones too. So right. I mean yeah. the the sixteen hundred foot pound ones. So, right. Right. and I sold uh, four of those and four and four of those and three stubbies. And so, then you have for me, you know, now the one that the one that I asked you about. What's the breakaway torque on that gun? Uh, that one is the uh, that's uh, thirteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. So that's the one right before. The, you know, this is a guy at the shop. This this the guy who was commenting on my hammer. He's got that gun. And we've used a snap-on half-inch battery gun that didn't take off a lug. Then we used a, a, a pneumatic gun, didn't work. He goes, oh, let me try my gun. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Yours is going to work. He brings over the Matco gun, put it on, and bam, it worked. So Mike looks at me and says, can you get me one of those? I'm like, I'll call Brian. Yeah. So, there you go. And uh, I've got. Uh, but he told me actually, he'll dial that thing. He does predominantly body work. He said he's dialed it all the way down. And put like headlight housings back in and done small trim work. And wow, he's crazy. <laughs> well, he, I don't know if he's a guy, the professional, but like I said, he dials it all the way down. And just yeah. like you, you know, when you, I ran some thermostat bolts today, a plastic thermostat, and I used a little, I used a snap on 3 8 gun. And again, you could do some damage, but you know, as you, as you run it in, as soon as you hear that the tonal change, you know, yeah. you back off, you know. Yeah. So, uh, and it goes from that to, to doing heavy stuff. And that's what he said. You know what? We'll take two. <laughs> yeah. That gun, uh, when you get them, that gun is, those guns are awesome. The, yeah. the, uh, the 2769s were, were a great, it's, it's still a great gun. I mean, like yeah. I said, uh, you, you'll break some shit if you're not yeah. careful. So, right. well, hey, we got, we got somebody breathing in the mic. Uh, who is it? <laughs> is it Jim? Might be me. <laughs> All right. Quit breathing. <laughs> Stop <laughs> okay. breathing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now the other thing is that the guy uh, the, with the gun, he said to me today, he says, you know, he goes, I, he goes, I know this gun has more oomph than what I'm getting here in the shop out of it. He goes, we got to dial up the air. I'm like, no, it's not that. I said, we got the volume. I said, I'll tell you what the problem is. I brought him over to my bench, and I said, I should look at the, the air fitting. They use these small... Harbor Freight air fittings, and I had to show them on my um, on my my uh, my brake bleeder. I have one of those uh, Mighty Vac brake bleeders. That's you know the automatic bleeder. I have an adapter on it because the fittings that I use at home are three eighths full flow. So I oh, put yeah. his the little one up to mine, and, he, and you could put that one inside of the one that I use. He was like, well, I said, yeah. I said, you come to my house. I'll show you what air pressure feels like. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It really made strong tools feel even stronger because you, yeah. you didn't restrict the flow. Most so was, most of those guns are rated at 90 PSI. So okay. when they're given a spec, it's at 90 PSI. And well, I've a, had 90 I've had S, That's probably 90 uh, CFM or SCFM. No, no, 90 PSI. Okay. Uh, it's the, uh, at the at the at the compressor, and I've actually gone into shops because they you know they say, "Oh, this isn't strong enough," or "This isn't," and I have a gauge, and I'll plug it right in their line, and they'll have only fifty psi coming out. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. Well, that's good. To, and good that's that and then and then I say, okay, and then we can backtrack, and you can find out either they have too much, or the tank's half filled with water, <laughs> or the oh, tank's just not putting out. Well, or if there's a and, regulator, yeah, they may have a regulator on a thing that someone right, down, right. And uh, you get it up, and they're like, "Holy crap, it was a big difference." And yeah. um, uh, that's usually, like I said, a lot of guys when they start talking about this doesn't have any power or nothing has any power, I usually tell them to check their lines. Right, right. We'll plug in. See, I have problems with my air compressor too. It, it seems like it is just never have has enough power. How big of a machine is it? Uh, How many gallon uh, tank? Thirty-five, I think. Okay, so it's probably is it made probably like a five horsepower? Yeah, it's a Walmart. One of the bigger ones from Walmart. Five horsepower is okay. You know, it's that's like that's like your standard home grade compressor. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you can, you can run an impact gun, but if you want to start using a whiz wheel or uh, a die grinder or, um, or like an air hammer, they, they just eat air like crazy. Yeah, that's when I that, feel it. Yep. That's yeah. when you want to check your CFM. Yeah. Because some, you know, like it's funny because guys will say, well, I have a 10 horsepower motor, but they're only running like eight and a half CFM. Yeah. Hmm. And you got to look because you need to, like, if you're running grinders or paint guns or anything like that, you want to have something from 13 on up. Yeah. Okay. On the yep. CFM. So, how, how much air is actually moving? And some air tools are just hogs. They really are. Oh, air yeah. Hogs. You know, even my, I have a carburetor agitator and that thing eats air. But, you know, and then you can see because you're using it. Other tools, yeah, yeah I, can, I can be working for hours before the thing kicks back on. And other stuff, it'll start cycling the, the, uh, the motor. And that's with an 80 gallon tank with a two stage motor. You know, it's, I, I got a, you know, the compressor I have, I was, they used to use it in some of the shops I worked in. It's a big yeah. machine. Hey, but, Jim, can you move your mic up? You're blowing like a lot of air. <laughs> I moved it down thinking it would help that. I'm also trying to find the uh, the mic, the mic adjustment. Yeah, I think that's the better. The thing I hate about the comu this computer stuff. Is it Were you guys that? hearing it or just me? I heard it no, too. I yeah. was hearing it. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> now you're I'm good sorry. now. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And like that's I said, a lot of times, like if you're doing, um, if you're doing painting, any kind of painting or anything, it's good to have like a small air compressor, just a tank in between, so you don't get the surge when the compressor kicks on. I got you, like a pre-stage. Oh, yeah. Right. So, like I have here at my house, I have a regular eight, uh, sixty-gallon tank. Yeah. But I have a smaller one, like a twenty-five-gallon that I have going through, so that I have any surge huh. uh, from the compressor turning on off, especially if you're painting like any kind of metallic stuff or Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, doing any kind. Yeah. You don't want to have a surge, and that so you, way you have a holding tank. So you just bought a, a tank and just put it in between? Well, yeah, I took one. I took, uh, I had a, I had a guy that had a, I collect a lot of trash this way, but uh, I had a guy that had a, a smaller compressor <laughs> and yeah. it blew up. And. He traded it in on a bigger one, and I just took the tank because the mo the the motor was no good. I mean, it was trash, and it's not even worth fixing. But I so, used the tank for a holding cell or uh, okay. to keep things from, from uh, uh, the burst. Yeah. You know. So yeah. so you actually doubled your 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 air the capacity. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a good idea. I never thought of that. So that's Learned. like especially if you do a lot of sanding. Or whatever that way if you don't have enough cfms the compressor will run all day yeah be like why is this thing running all day it's just trying to keep up mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay. and uh and uh, like i said you just put in you just run everything and then you just run right towards the end you just run the other tank mm -hmm. and that way it's a holding cell or, or it keeps this, any kind of surge from happening yeah. that's yeah. a good idea yep makes sense so yeah, I'm going to try that. All right, Ray, you ready to see my project? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, nice relays. That is that? very nice. Now, this is on clear plexiglass. I got to take the tape off. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to I'm trying to make everything convenient in one spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. All my extra stuff. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an electric fan in. Um, my electric fuel pump, all my lights, you know, all my LED stuff I'm putting in. So I'm gonna, I want to have a nice, you know, spot. right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's nice. I love I love panels like that because everything's in one place. Um, I'll tell you a couple things I learned about stuff like that. Uh, the, the the tradition was relays really should be as close to the power source as possible, which means the battery. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense because then you're running your trigger wire, which is a smaller gauge. You can run that longer. You don't want to run the power wires longer because it's it's heavier and takes up more space. Yeah. Like I did, I put headlight relays in my car. And, you know, of course, this is the problem. When you're building a car, everything's apart. So I said, okay, where can I stick these where you're not going to really see them, but they're going to be accessible? Well, I use the front, you know, the, uh, the uh, core support. And then you put the battery in the car and, poof, now you don't see the relays. Beautiful. They're hidden. 
until I had to troubleshoot one. I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn. So now, you know, my best, my plan was great, except now when I had to troubleshoot it, I couldn't get yeah. out of it. So, yeah, try and really think ahead. <laughs> like, well, put things together first. I have a big spot over the top of the battery. So I'm going to build a tray, which I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm going to build a tray to go on top of it. Mm -hmm. So it'll be sitting right on top. And then maybe put a hinge on it where I can get to the battery if I have to or, yeah. you know, take it take it loose or whatever. Just make right? sure just make sure that that battery is vented. Yeah, and well, this is the good. Vent and, run the, and run the vent hose away because I'll tell you a story about a 911 <laughs> that uh -oh. the guy put an aftermarket batteries in because it didn't have the vent tube. Yeah. And that's the fuse box is over top of the, on a 911, on an older 911. And of course, yeah. you close the front trunk and there's no vent and the battery from boiling going through its cycle, the gases ate out the carpet ate out the fuse box and wow. destroyed everything and, yeah. and ate through the paint. Yeah. <laughs> and the then guy was upset because he didn't put the right battery. He didn't want to spend the money for the right batteries, but it wasn't vented. You yeah. know, it's, it's so funny. if you seal that up or put that, you want to make sure that you run a vent tube. Well, under, under it is all open, like mm -hmm. under the fender. Yeah. So it'll have air coming up. Things have changed because yeah. my Fiat, is it's a 79, but the battery's in the trunk. And the standard configuration is that there's a tube that comes off a hose that would go onto a battery vent that vents it under the car. Great. But that was when batteries were externally vented. Now they're all internally vented. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have to worry about that anymore. Motorcycle batteries still need a, a lot of them still need a vent tube. Yeah. Yeah. You, the biggest thing I'm thinking with that, Lewis, is if it's going to be something you want to move, you got to have enough flexure. You got to have enough wire that's going to be able to let it move. Yeah. Um, and you got a lot, you're gonna have a lot of heavy wires there, so yeah, spec it out, mock it out first. But, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I want to make the box if I want to do like aluminum or fiberglass. I was gonna make a fiberglass box, you know. A lot of uh, guys they use wood, <laughs> you yeah. know, for something like that. I mean, it doesn't always look as, as well, they're doing it like in a trunk or enclose it, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, thinking non conductive, that's why, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to be a focal point. Lexan too, if you get a thick enough piece. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like what cool you have, right? Lexan. Yeah. 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 I'm, uh, I'm gonna go to our our. Uh, they call it it's Star Supply is the name of the place, but it, it's, mm -hmm. you know, people take um, leftover or overstock stuff. Right. Building materials, so that's where I get a lot of my stuff. So I'm gonna go there and play around, see what I can find. Yeah, talking about relays. I was at my friend's bike shop yesterday. And a guy came in. I'm, I'm looking at this bike. The, the husband and wife, they were, I guess, in their 60s. And I'm looking at this bike, and it's screaming the early 1990s to me. It was a Harley. It was a low rider with a taxi cab yellow paint job. But it had, like, the ripped, you know, the ripped airbrush with, like, a, like a marble pattern under it with some lightning bolts in mm -hmm. purple. It was kind of coming through the yellow, you know, strategically around the bike. It just looks very dated to me. It looked brand new. But it was just old. I'm like, wow, I kept it in great shape. I found yeah. out that, yeah, the guy had the bike painted in the early 90s, um, rode it a few years and then just parked it. He hasn't, now he's reviving it after sitting for that long. I said, okay, that's yeah. what the paint job looks like it does. But they had to change the starter relay. So my buddy, um, they've done a lot of work, like $3,000 worth of work on this bike just to get it back into shape because it had wow. just been sitting. I didn't ask him what they did, but I'm sure it was all needed. And that changed the starter relay. So I saw them with a bunch of tools and cutters and all. And, you know, my buddy takes the relay and he threw it on his desk. I grabbed it. It's a Bosch 20 amp relay. Mm -hmm. And, and it, the, the pins were all kind of um, oxidized. So I said, you know, you could probably just clean these up. That's probably what the problem was. You clean them up and put it back in. He goes, I know. But after three grand worth of work, he goes, I'll give him a new relay. The problem was, right from Harley, the relay has a, a tab on it. And... Yeah. That was pop riveted by the battery tray of the motorcycle. So to get it out, you got to drill a rivet out. I yeah. said, you know, that's why what they should do is like even this. The relay has the tab on it. Yep. That and comes the socket out. It doesn't. I said the socket needs to have the tab so you can mount the socket and remove the relay. Because yep. otherwise, how are you gonna service it? Yep. And uh I don't know why Bosch and that Brian, what do you think? I mean, you've seen that a thousand times. Why you know yeah. I know you're not a Bosch engineer, but even this one, I bought these relays. I bought these relays with a built-in fuse. Yeah, 
it'll save me the trouble of another fuse. But guess what? Trouble. The relay has the still has the tab on it, and the socket doesn't. I was, like, <laughs> I was thinking that when I was putting mine together. I'm like, why? Why did it put it on the on yeah. the thing? Exactly right. Yeah. The tab grounded. Yeah. What's that, Jim? Is the tab grounded? No. It goes right into the plastic body. It is not grounded. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the it is weird. And that's why I said, yeah, that's why I'm thinking like maybe next project, I'll go to the junkyard and get an old secondary fuse panel or relay box out of a car. I was thinking that too. Yeah. I, who would realize, oh, my my, uh, my co-host Joe gave me a, uh, a birthday present a while ago. He, he gave me a set of um, wild relay, you know, relay sockets to test relays with. Because I'm always sitting there, you lift the relay and you stick a little pin in there trying to, you know, read the voltage and, and signal. So now you can pull it out, put the, the test block in and plug the relay into that. And they oh, give you nice. pins cool. outside. But they didn't label them. That was the only thing. They didn't label them. And I was, I was kind of <laughs> surprised at that. So I'm going to have to figure They're, out. They should way. be labeled. They should have the 85, 50, and, uh, 85, 84, 30, 15s on them. 30, 85, 86, 87, 87A. Yeah, on the inside. But I'm saying the pins that are on the outside are not yeah, labeled. Yeah, they're labeled. Oh, I gotta look. I didn't see it. I have to look again. Maybe I missed it. I this need is to, the uh, same color as the. Pl I mean, uh, that's who that's who makes ours, and ours are labeled. I have to get my, uh, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Check out this uh, fuse box I bought. It, that almost looks like a painless box. Yeah. That's very nice. Who's yeah, that from? I mean, who's the Who's the supplier? Uh, I don't know. It's Amazon. <laughs> it's a nice Amazon. box. Amazon. <laughs> no, that's why I got the. <laughs> With the fuses, I got these off of Amazon. It was like a box of six or eight yeah. of them. So it even came with stickers too, so I could put uh, you know, label it. The only thing that really burns me is there's no that no one really followed convention with the wiring pattern for the sockets. You know, not the way that I know it, at least. So, well, when I when I got these, they had the blue wire in the hot wire socket, so I had to switch them all around. Hey, What's my blue on here? Let's see if That's I can European see. That's European wiring. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they had the red in the 87A in the That's, middle. Yeah. That's, That's 87A is the, is the triggered ground. Yeah, That's they had the they had a red wire red stuck wire in there. Into it. Yeah, and then they had the blue wire in the in the power. <laughs> Great. All right, let's see. Blue. Guy was colorblind that night. Yeah. Now, Something. European standards are really weird. They're completely different from U.S. standards. I've uh, One time, I, I worked in a factory one time. We were building a machine. I was wiring it, but we had to uh, change all the wiring because it was going to Europe, and we had to meet the EC standards, not the UL standards here in the U.S. So all the colors were different, and we were like, we have to do what? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like green, you cannot use green as a ground in Europe, it has to be green with a yellow stripe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this blue is crazy in fact, if you ever pull apart a computer cable, you know, the little power cable that goes in the back, if you ever cut it, it's like a blue wire, a brown wire, and something else. I think the blue is hot. Blue is hot, really? That's wow. the European standard. I, yeah. It's one of those crazy things that, you know, it depends on where you are and where you go. Yeah. You come up, you see different stuff. That's the thing, though. Living in America, I want the American standard. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> My right. plumbing, I'm American standard helps out. <laughs> well, that's the problem. It gets confusing as a tech. Like, what am I looking at here? You know, I remember the first time I the, when I owned an Audi, I looked at those schematics. I was like, what the hell did they do? You know, it was like there was the color convention was different, and you had to learn it. And yeah, the show Porsche was the same way. But, I know when uh, I worked in Long Island City, I had right on my desk metric to English conversion for everything. Mm. Just because every time you went in, you know, originally when we when we bought stuff, everything would be in you know English measurements, you know, foot, you know, feet, things like that. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, they changed everything to meters. I'm like, okay, well, how a millimeter is what? An inch is how many millimeters? And and so I just put it on my desk. I said, okay, now I know I can I can find it just by looking at it. Right. And then you realize yeah. it's the same size. Yeah. You know, three right. feet's a meter. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I learned something the other day. I had to go take a drive shaft out of a Jeep, and I said, okay, it's probably – I looked at the, the, the bolts on the saddles. I said, yeah, it looks like about a 10 millimeter. So I grabbed my 10 millimeter socket, went in there, and took it right off. And then I found out later on, no, it was actually 5 sixteenths. So now yeah. I know. I learned the conversion, 5 sixteenths and 10 millimeters. Yeah. 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 Pretty close. 
Brian, I just let my buddy at the shop know that we're out on the pumpkin carving tools from Matco. And he said, <laughs> so he asked Brian, see, he knows you by name and you've never met him. He says, ask Brian if there's any specials this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I don't even have a flyer with me. We have, uh, we got a new flyer coming out next next week, I think. So I, I haven't even opened it up to see what's coming. Uh, yeah. I've been, I, I, I tell you, this week's been such a crazy week, but you're talking about the uh, conversions and metric and uh, uh, standard. There's a, there's a guy that bought a building downtown Silver Spring and he's you know, making a nightclub with a retractable roof mm. that he ordered from uh, uh, France. Oh boy, I can hear this. But he gave it in he gave it in uh standard size and they made and they didn't convert it. So when he got this, this thing cost like uh one and a half million dollars for this roof or something. Wow. And it doesn't fit now. <laughs> that reminds me of spinal tap, you know, you think of Stonehenge. <laughs> that That's terrible. Crazy. I don't know how much it was the guy was he was the other guy, the the guy, the shop that I go into, he's friends with the guy or knows the guy, and he was telling me, and he was down the last week, week, and he was telling me, man, he's trying to get this all straightened out because he spent, you know, four hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars for this retractable roof thing or something. Wow. I said maybe you should just find another building that well that that roof will fit and then, then sell the other building. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, find one by built by a French designer. French yeah. architect. Uh, I think it was France, but it was something crazy. But they didn't understand the the, the change of uh, measurements, you know. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So my next uh, thing is I'm going to start an interior. So I'm going to get the seats started and then the dashboard. I'm going to, I'm going to do fiberglass because uh, I can't find a dashboard that's narrow. Right. right. Yeah. So I'm going to do the iPad and all that stuff in the dash. Okay. I'm going to oh, do okay. some, a little bit of motorized stuff too, because my heater controls is real weird. It's the older Cadillac style. And I'm going to leave it in there, but I'm going to put the iPad over it, like at an angle. And I'm going to motorize the iPad down when I need to get to the radio and the, and the heat controls. And the and iPad motorize it control, back up. What's the iPad going to control exactly? Um, it'll have the GPS. It'll have all my music, you know, to store my music on it. Um, you know, anything, movies, I can do anything with it. Okay, you know. so for entertainment. Because I just think of like, you know, 20... 30 years down the line and that car's still around and someone says damn what the hell is this thing here that's in the dash it doesn't work you know, I, uh, yeah i can't get real, what how am i gonna find a replacement for this i'll be looking on you know like used electronics but it's like oh man that's an old ipad a what well listen i uh it has an ape track in it so i told my daughter come on let me show you ape track she's like what's an yeah. ape track i did i, I showed like, my kids i was like uh look i was like it's <laughs> it's what we used to play our music with and she was like, how big is it? And she goes, this is like a VCR tape? I was like, pretty close. Almost. <laughs> yeah. I told him, I said, you know, the thing was, between the, between the actual four tracks, I said, you learn, you learn, like, after what song on track one, where you hit the button to go to either two or three, because that was the next song you liked. You learned the yep. staging of the songs on the track. What a pain in the ass that was. Yeah. <laughs> Old school there, boy. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah good <laughs> somebody on facebook shared a picture of a car the eight track player was actually in the back seat really and it was yeah that's the way it came it, it, it was really weird it was like mid-60s car i don't remember what it was there you go that's yeah nice. yeah sure i've never heard of it in the back though yeah me either yeah it, it, I, I saw the picture it did look weird but it was there it was yeah, so all that's kind of, that radio will come out. I'll put a regular, you know, regular digital. Where actually, I'm going to put a steering wheel in with with um the controls on it too. So I'll have a, a regular wow. radio behind the iPad to control all that stuff. I always wondered what it was like if you wanted to retrofit something like that because I have a couple cars in the house with the steering wheel controls and I love them. And I always think, what what would it take to make that work in a car if it didn't come in? 
And so you can you, you can be our test mule and let us know. I've been researching. Good It'll luck, work when man. I'm done. Good luck. <laughs> you know, back um back in like let's see what year was it? I want to say 80s 87, 88. Um, the stereo company moved into our areas. It was called PJ's Auto Sound. And he had the controls on the steering wheel before they came out. He like actually fabricated it and it was it everything worked on it. And uh I don't know when they came out with the controls on the steering wheel, but he was ahead of the time, man. What, what year was that that he came in? Uh I want to say it was eighty seven. Wow, that is early. Yeah, and it was in a Ford van. Um a real monster, man. It was a monster. <laughs> the have, name yeah. of it was Thunderdome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a 93. Like a, my motorcycle's a 93, and that has hail ball amount of controls. And I'm, you know, it was probably a, maybe a few years prior to that that they started doing that. Mm -hmm. That was the first, the earliest I ever saw on a motorcycle. But yeah, yeah, mine was 87, and I had the controls. Okay. But here's the thing: on a steering wheel, it turns. Right. Exactly. So I don't even know how he figured that out. You know what I mean? To get it to. I mean, obviously. You talk about an engineering project. The first thing I think of is RF, you know, but I don't know mm -hmm. if that was the technology that they used back right then. I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he. I mean, he then you're looking at the clock spring. You're looking at a, you know, a contact that's going to yep, turn. That's what I think he did. He figured out how to make a ring in there, maybe yeah. different rings. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now it's all digital. Take apart a uh, modern day steering wheel, see how they figured it out. And then reverse engineer it. It's kind of like on the CAN bus. I think it's all it's all small signal uh, transfer like that. Just, you know, because you have your your body control modules and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would venture to guess that's how they do it. I've never taken one apart. Yeah. And yeah, that would be the trick to see what it looks like. A lot of small yeah. wires. All the yeah, all of the things that are on a steering wheel now. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with I'm going with a. Uh, um, the steering wheel out of a Grand Prix, so it's an older one, it's like a 0, 03 or 04. Yeah. So it's not, it don't have a whole bunch of stuff on it, you know. It has the Did volume you, control, cruise. Lewis, most of your stuff is coming from a Grand Prix or a, Pont a Pontiac. Did you find a donor car, or yeah, one of my buddies has a whole bunch of stuff, um, he probably has 10 or 15 of them. Yep, so I'm robbing them. Rotten. <laughs> <laughs> what I did is uh, I traded him some tires. Check this out. Tell me if you guys can. That's a Mickey Thompson. Can you see how wide it is? Well, you can't see it. Either. It's black and round. Listen, yeah. it is a 15 by 21. Holy oh. smokes. <laughs> little steamroller. Dude, dude, I barely could get in the back seat. What were you dude, doing with those? They're Mickey Thompson. One of my buddies said, "Hey, I got these Mickey Thompsons. I bought them ten years ago, fifteen years ago, and they've been in my basement." He goes, "I never built a car, so you want them?" So I picked them up, took them to my buddy with the with the seats and stuff. I'm like, "Hey, psh, psh. nice." And I was out. <laughs> you got to build like a or something to put put those on, you know? Because you can't. Yeah, obviously you have you have like fender clearance is a problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he um he actually did a frame. He took a frame out of a uh, El Camino, and he narrowed it. And he said the frame rails like this this far apart. Yeah, yeah. right. Get right. yeah. those under it, sure. but he never finished the car. So I was like, well, I could probably get rid of your frame too if he wants to sell it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I might order my leather in a couple of weeks. Actually, I, I think I'm gonna wait till after SEMA because I, I'm gonna talk to a couple of people out there. You know, to sell, sell leather and vinyl and stuff. Yeah. Maybe find a, a good supplier, a better supplier. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm going to do. But I'm ready to get on it, though. So how much ha – have you done anything to the body yet, or is it just pretty no. much just – you've just been doing the – I don't want to say R&D, but just the little stuff. Have you, you know, have you torn yeah. the barn apart? No. What I did is I put a new uh, fuel tank in it. I ran new uh, braided lines. I put in the fuel regulator, fuel pump, and what else to do? Uh, new batteries. I'm changing some wire and stuff. You know, I'm just, you know, make sure it's running good. I got a radiator um, leak. So I got to put a new radiator in it. 
that uh you know let it run for a little bit and uh, seeing something leaking out like ah yeah so I'm gonna order a new radiator I'm gonna make sure everything's running yeah I'm gonna make sure everything's running fine and but... then I'm gonna start on the body oh it's always interesting seeing how people start like start a project like where where they because I know when I did my own car I just I started and I said why did I do that? Why did I? You know, I thought about it later. I'm like, how? Why did I do that? I was going to somewhere, I guess, right? So, yeah, I might do the brake lines next. I'm going to try to. I want everything to be mechanically done. Yeah, and then I'll start on the pretty stuff. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do the brake lines Get that and car uh, up in the air. Get it up as yeah. high as you can. Yeah. It, listen, putting that fuel lines and stuff on sucked. Yeah. I'm rolling under the car, forgot a wrench, Ooh. had to roll out. You know what I mean? I'm in and out of there 40 times. <laughs> I was doing that today, but I was getting dripped on because the car was wet. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. God, you guys got rain? Yeah, we got rain today. Man, yeah, I wish too. we would get some rain. Yeah. Man, we went, we only got, what was it? This has been the driest uh, September, and we're going in October. It's terrible, man. We have, I mean, we're in. Bad drought condition right now. Wow, really? Yeah, and you're not that far from us either. We haven't had. We had what was it? Five tenths, five tenths of rain. That's all we had for September. Yeah, it was dry here not too. Even, yeah, it was had, terrible. We had a dry September. Yeah, well, of course, yesterday it was 91 degrees, and today it was like 54. So that was only yeah. a, a 40 degree change in a day. That was kind of funny. Yeah, we didn't yeah. get that drastic. We were supposed to be that drastic, but we didn't because we had uh, 95 yesterday, and it was 80 something today. Okay. It still turned out we, we they were talking about a 40 degree dip, but it never happened. I was hoping yeah. for it. Yeah, but yeah, to have some rain. Yeah. I sound like my dad now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I, I was catch young, myself and, all the time, yeah. I'm like. I catch myself all the time, like, oh man, that was my dad. You know, I, I was I was putting all the yard stuff away or anything. You know, my wife calls me at work, says, "Where's the sprinkler that I had in the front?" I'm like, what's in the shed? You know, was, right. so she's out there, and you know, now she's in the shed with the phone. I'm like, no, look over there, no, look over. So what the hell do you need the sprinkler for anyway? She goes, well, the long guy told me that the front lawn's in distress. I need to water it. I'm like, so take the hose up. So. In distress, yeah. But that was probably a byproduct of of a dry September. You're right. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, oh, I'm well. making some burgers, and yeah, my wife comes down, and, and I was doing some stuff on the computer. So you gotta come help me. What? A barbecue? You gotta drag the barbecue under the the, the, the tent. I got a you know a, an awning thing on the on the deck. She goes, cause it's it's pouring like rain, it's pouring like mad. And I'm trying to cook these burgers. So I come upstairs. I'm like, and I hear the rain coming down. I said, so you want me to go out there in that rain <laughs> to move the barbecue? <laughs> she goes, well, the burgers are already on. I'm like, oh, different story. All right, <laughs> you gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> out I went. Drag it under. Cook away. Yes. I get I get laughed at because that's the first thing that gets shoveled when it gets snow right to yeah. the smoker. Because I cook on the I, I you know I'm on the smoker. Right. Seven days a week, you know, everything gets cooked out there. So, yeah, yeah. But it's it's funny. The wife goes, "Oh, you're gonna go shovel the walkway? No, no, no I'm making a path to the smoker." So. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, and the converse of that is, I got this guy. This guy at the shop, um, he's uh, from Guyana, so uh, really, really sweetheart of a guy. And and I mean, he makes all of his own food. He cooks everything all, all natural. I mean, he's really health conscious, and and you'd never know it. Like I. I we're talking about age one day, and I said, uh, we were talking, I said, well, Derek, I said, how old are you? He goes, how old do I look? I said, well, you work like you're 20 because you're a little worker bee, man. This guy just works all day. I said, I know you're not. You're probably a little older. He says, well, I'm 47. I'm like, I would have never guessed it. I would never, I would have guessed you were like maybe 29 or 32. Yeah. yeah. So he's living a good lifestyle, but we got him trained over the summer. We had the just the softy guy come to the shop like every week and just like, <laughs> so you make this, you stop here. You know, a couple times a week, mm. and he did. So, and you know, Derek at first he didn't want anything, and then he had something small. And by the end of the summer, he was like out there with us. Hey, where's the ice cream guy coming? Where's the ice cream guy coming? So now we talk about it in the shop. Like he said to me, "Hey, where's the ice cream guy?" 
and what it is, he stopped coming because the kids are in school, and I'm yeah. like, you know, he could still be, he could still be coming around. We can, because we'll still be buying, and we're dropping like thirty bucks at a clip on the Mr. Softy truck. It's like, <laughs> yeah, we got to get this guy back. I told him, yeah. come over here, man. I, I'm, ice cream, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I'm in the winter. I don't care. I go to Carville, not. Uh, I'm not the person to judge. <laughs> You've corrupted him, Ray. If the, I did. We definitely did. He said, "Yo, he eats so good." And yeah, uh, yeah definitely corrupted that's him. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the shop dynamics, you know. Next yeah. week, uh, next week we're gonna have uh, John Gardner on from uh, Motorhead Garage. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He's gonna be on next week. Um, I thought I had a, a surprise guest for us this week, but that's right. You teased that, yeah. Yeah, she couldn't. She couldn't make it, so I'll okay. get it popping though. All you right. guys really appreciate her once once I get her on. Okay, so you're still not going to tell us? Nope. Ah, <laughs> still not going to tell. Killing this, me. This is uh, royalty. I'm bringing royalty, royalty. on. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what you guys. How do you coerce your wife when you tell her you're going to buy a dinner out at a nice restaurant? <laughs> She's the other royalty. Yeah, well, you know. She's the chief royalty. Chief are, you roll, are you rolling commander. peaches into the, the whole way door there? I don't know. Yep. Yeah, so I, I got I got a lot of people lined up, but it's just just getting the right times. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, people are so busy, so it's hard to pin them down. But yeah, we got some people lined up. Yeah, yeah. that's good. No, I imagine how tough it must be to pin people down, especially to the one specific night in time. Yeah, yep. So and you know, uh, if you're dealing with um, time zones and things like that, because I know yep. a couple of times we've had people from California, yep. and you know it's only six o'clock for them. In fact, one guy got off and said, hey, "I'm going to dinner. See you guys later." <laughs> yeah, well, that's why we started at nine because um, we wanted to be able to have the West Coast people get on. That's why I we made it at nine o'clock. Radio show, it's the same thing, you know. I and it's on a Sunday, no less. So it's like you know, a lot of guys are out of the I, I've lost people just because of that. And if yeah. it's the West Coast and it's Sunday, it's even worse. So, yeah, it's it's a, it's a trip sometimes, it's hard. yeah. But we'll keep our community popping. I mean, yeah. you know, I learn something new every day. I learn something about that air compressor, you know, from you guys, something new. Absolutely. I'm definitely gonna try that. Mm. Yeah, that's a good idea. The double stage, and you could go. You can go to Harbor Freight and buy one of those tanks and use that as your, you know. Mm -hmm. tank. Yeah, I've seen a couple of compressor tanks. Guys just throw them out. You know, they just they get they just they throw them out. I've seen a few. I might throw something on on Facebook or something. See if anybody has one. I'm sure I've one seen, of my friends got one. You guys in the shop take like a horizontal tank or even a vertical and turn it and mount it up in the rafters. You know, just mount oh, it yeah. up high. You have to be on. It could be anywhere. You know? Yeah. Yep, that's a good idea, man. I never even, even thought of it. Yeah, makes it easier to drain that way. <laughs> yeah, my tank's probably full of water. <laughs> yeah, you gotta drain it every now, especially in the summer. You, know, you get a lot of condensation. Yeah, a lot of, to, especially especially if you're going from outside to inside, yeah. and you have a lot of a lot of you know some guys have a compressor outside, and they're mm -hmm. running the lines in, and the compressor's so hot. Yeah. And that the air changes, and like I said, you'll have a a lot of condensation. But um, yeah. I can't tell you how many tanks <laughs> you go by there, and they're like, "Man, this thing just drains." You know, you drain it for them, and they're like, "Holy crap, how much water's in there?" And I said, "Oh, <laughs> about sixty gallons." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and you can, they sell a device. It's an automatic drain. It's yeah. just it's a diaphragm. So as the water starts laying on the diaphragm, it gets to a certain volume and weight, and it just pushes uh. open the diaphragm and just blows off the water. And when the diaphragm, when the weight enough weight comes off it, the diaphragm closes. Huh. Yep. And I think uh, Robert Shaw makes that. I, I, you know, I had one on my compressor, and then it actually failed. So I had to get a new one. I never reinstalled it because I wanted to redo everything, and I never did. So it's sitting on top of the compressor in a box. But they do make that. That's you know, yeah. makes the best work out. Yeah. Uh, hey Brian, an MST ninety three C. What about it? What is it? It's a the... pulley remover and installer set. Guy was asking me about that today. He may, uh, if he doesn't come up with one in a, a day or two, maybe ordering one. It's uh, gonna do work, do some job, job on the tow truck. 
change that MSC up. 90 what? MST 93C. I'm going to change a couple of the pulleys on uh, on the diesel. Hey, uh, while you're looking that up, Brian, does uh -huh. anybody have a steering column GM 70s, 80s? My steering column has no tilt. <laughs> How do you have a Cadillac with no tilt wheel? Yeah, that is odd. That I'm, is odd. I've never seen one. Yeah, I haven't either. Even my 65 had tilt. Uh, usually they have tilt and telescope, but nothing. Yeah. It's the seventies, yeah, 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 nothing. Wow, I don't weird. know if it got. In, I don't know if somebody stole it or, and they put a. <laughs> a you know what I mean? Somebody might have stole it and put a, another column oh, in a straight column. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That <laughs> that polar system. I mean, I got one. I actually I have one on a truck, but it's for a guy on Monday. Uh -huh. but it's uh, it's eighty five bucks. Uh, I'll let you know if we're, uh, like I said, if he doesn't come up with it today, so I'll yeah. reach out to you. Hey, I have a compressor question for you guys. Is there any way of quieting it down? Yeah. Within yep. within limits, yeah. You can buy a, a brand new Flexzilla one. Thanks. Because <laughs> I now? bought... I bought a used compressor. It's one of these. If you ever go into like a, a Costco or something like that, and you see them in the back, they're the big sixty-gallon. I bought uh -huh. it used off a neighbor for fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why he got rid of it was because it was too loud. He bought a bought a brand new one. I'm like, well, how can I go wrong with this for fifty bucks? Let, let's start with. Will let's, drive you mad. Let's start with the obvious. Does it have a muffler on it? Yes, it does. Is it gutted? How's I mean, you can always try changing it. I actually did. It's a tiny little plastic thing, so it doesn't take oh, a whole lot of out. Mine actually has a metal can that's got a, it's pretty big. I mean, I've seen guys reroute the muffler, reroute it to a, you know, up or, or out of a wall. But the, you know, the, the, the motor is going to make, the, the compressor and the motor are going to make some noise because they're turning, you know. What, what do you have it mounted on? Wood. A wood uh, on a on a wood floor. I mean, on yeah, a wood basically, crate. Basically, two four by it's bolted to two four by fours, and it's sitting on a corner of a concrete garage, mm -hmm. concrete floor. Okay. I mean, I, I'm going right on the concrete floor, but I mean, they're, they're noisy. I mean, I they're, they're not going to be quiet. A compressor is not yeah. going to be. The only ones I saw were quiet was like the really big horizontal, big big piston, you know, shop compressors. A friend of mine, because I, I had one, I had his in my garage for a while while he was in between living places, and that one it was a very very slow turning machine too. It was it was a torquey motor, and it was it was made for you know for for spraying you know for for, for volume, so it didn't turn as fast, and it was a lot quieter than any of the other ones I've ever seen. But it was also a very big machine. Big money. <laughs> and I have, I have a heart. I think no, I one is, it's just function of uh, the age and the type of compressor. It is. <coughs> you know, it's a cheap. It's yeah. it's a cheaper compressor. It's a single stage, whereas you know, I've I've looked at new compressors and everything now has the motor and the compressor is two separate pieces now. But really? It's a dual stage compressor. And those are a hell of a lot quieter. Well, I mean, well, maybe if it's separate, yeah. I'll tell you now. Fifty I'm, bucks. I mean, I'm running. An, I have an eighty gallon tank with a two stage motor. Uh, it's it's an eight and a half horsepower machine. And you know it's on the concrete floor, and when it turns on, you know it. I mean, that thing is on, and you know it's on. You know, there's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. so, Lee just put in in the comments. He has a friend that that put a box box around his. Yeah, I just read that. That's actually that's not a bad idea. I well, did, I've seen. I might try I, that. I've seen a lot of people do that on like Instagram and stuff. They 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 put the silence um, foam in a box around it. You gotta really make sure it's. Been, I did that. I have a, a, a bee blaster, and the bee blaster has a recovery tank, which is two cans and a, and a big vacuum motor, and that thing is loud. So, you know, that, when I got to find buddy, they had built a box around it with insulation. That quieted it down a lot. But it did mm -hmm. get hot in there, you know, so you really yeah. got to make sure it's yeah. you don't want to open it. Hey, hey, Ray, is yeah. yours actually bolted to the floor or sitting mm -hmm. on the floor? Just sitting on the floor. You should put some hockey pucks under it. I do. I have some. I got some big ones. It's one of the things I want to do. I want to raise it up enough to put some isolating feet under it, and then I can. Mine put that... actually crack. Mine actually cracked the leg off. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Because I had it sitting on the floor. 
and it cried. And of course, you know, I was going to be crazy enough to uh, weld the tank back together. Right. And that's a, that's a pretty big no, no. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's my first thought too. I'll just weld it back together. Yeah. Yeah. Mine, so, mine was shaking like that and I put some foam under it to yeah. stop it from rattling. Yeah. Yeah. They'll walk around and they'll, they'll, they'll eventually crack the leg on those. You got to yeah, be careful. But stay is right where it's just so damn heavy. But uh, but Jim, yeah. there's a there's a there's a uh, a compressor from Flexzilla, and they they have a muffler on it. Now I'm waiting when I go to my tool show uh, in February, because um, we'll have them there. We had them there last year, and literally they had them running, and you can stand right next to them, and you can't even hear them running. But wow. I'm hoping that there'll be parts available so that I can try to convert that muffler onto my compressor. Hmm. Yeah, let me know yeah, about that. Yeah. So that's what I'm kind of waiting for because it just came out last year, and uh, there's probably a video on uh, on on my Facebook page. I'm standing next to it, talking on the phone with somebody, and you can't even hear the compressor running. And that's exactly why guys remotely mount the compressors because they're noisy. You know? Yeah. I got to tell you a funny so, story. You know, mine's in my garage at home and it's, it's a tight space, car and a half. It's not big. And uh, you know, using air tools, the compressors going, the radio's on, there's always something happening. But when I was building my car, I have a woman here on the Island who rebuilt my clock, the analog clock. And I had it set up on, you know, on my workbench with a, with a little battery. And I just let it run for like a year while I was building, you know, working on a car. And it's ironic because people will be in the garage at me. And as we're talking, the compressor will kick on and they always jump. I guess I hear the relay close. I hear that and I know it's coming on. So it just mm -hmm. doesn't bother me anymore. Everybody, even my wife, who, you know, she's been in there a hundred times. She jumps. So there I am. The compressor's going. The radio's on. Every time that clock would, would recycle and the points would close, I would jump. <laughs> and even now, the clock is in the car, and the car is in the garage, and I'll be working on something, and I hear those points close. It's just oh, a yeah. foreign noise. Yeah, it's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that clock still work? Well, she rebuilt it. Yeah, it's it's it, it's nice. an analog. Yeah, it does. I wanted those to be notorious for not working. And mine didn't work. Yeah, but I get you know she does. Uh, her name's Marilyn, the clock lady. She's right in Lindenhurst. And she did, um, she does clocks. Her whole house is filled with clocks. And, you know, she listens to the show. Her and her uh, boyfriend, they do um, oil burner ripouts and uh, and other things. But she works on her own vehicle. So that's how she hooked up with us because she was asking us questions about working on her vehicles. And I asked her one day, I said, hey, Marilyn, you rebuild clocks. Can you do a clock from a car? Well, what kind? She goes, yeah, it's the same thing, just a little smaller. And I gave her two, two or three clocks and she took the best parts and, and made it and now it works i think i'm gonna put an analog clock like the old cadillacs in the dash you That's know it. part of it right on top yep. of the ipad yep yeah so <laughs> i am I i'm being brilliant. serious i'm putting Absolutely one in brilliant i you know i like that like chrysler did that and and i mean yep. accurate too but chrysler did they, you know in some of the cars they just put that nice white faced analog yep. well it's an it, it's an analog uh, looking clock it's a it's a quartz movement you have to read it yeah well yeah you have to well, you have to read a digital clock too yeah I'm, I'm definitely putting it in there I, i'm customizing <laughs> it so i'm gonna do what i want you know what i mean it's gonna have yeah, everything that's, i want that's hey, funny freaking big freaking ben on the dashboard i think that's you do whatever you want man with chimes and bells do the whole nine yards get a and listen clock. i'm not putting a small ipad see this is a regular size i think this is a i don't know what this is but I'm going with the 12 inch boy. Wow. The oh, big the dog. Bigger <laughs> yeah. than the dashboard. Yeah. Yeah. They'll think you'll have a TV on and get pulled over. Yeah. Hey, Jim, there's a uh, 87 Monte Carlo going across Barrett Jacks right now. It's already up to 11 grand. <laughs> yeah. You see that? I was just watching them. I don't know if that's oh, I'm, now the TV. I'm not, I don't have a TV in this room. It's got, it's got aftermarket wheels, but I don't know if it's got what motors in it. If that's a 3 it's a clean car. White with a burgundy gut. I wonder if it's that's, a 305. Oh, yeah, that's big. Yeah. That's what I'm going. You okay. See the clock? Holy yeah. smokes. Yeah. Right on top Perfect. of the iPad, yeah. 
Nice. Yep. Yeah, I like that. First kid you get in a car, if they ask you what time it is, you tell them, hey, point to the clock. I say, hey, there's the clock right there. See if they can read it. My daughter's 21. She can't read it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I have a nephew. He's standing right next to my grandfather clock, and he wants to know what time it is. I was like, the clock's right there. He's like, oh, I can't read that. Can't Listen, read that. my daughter and three of her friends were in the living room one day, and they was like, what time is it? And they all looked at the clock and was like, I don't know. None of them knew. <laughs> it's, it's XII and IV. What, uh, I don't know what those. I even tried to have a lesson, and it was like, no, we don't get it. We don't get <laughs> you talking foreign language. Yeah, it's really wow. because that's only in like one generation that that happened. Yeah, yeah, really <laughs> crazy. All right, so guys, what uh, kind of gauges should I look for? Um, a guy told me today I should go digital. Um, you got to go Dakota Digital. Dakota Digital. Yeah, Absolutely. that's what he told me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd... And then I mean, even just that statement opens up all the choices of Dakota Digital. They have like you know probably 50, 60 different choices of style and whatever. Really. But there's you know, gonna, you change the colors on the fly too. Oh yeah, so, I'm yeah. gonna try to get them on the show. Yeah, cool. yeah, they'd be good. Good company. They make some cool stuff. I don't use I don't use any of the stuff, but I helped install a few. I've seen one in a '57 Chevy, which is like all the digital, all the you know digital yeah. gauges. It looks really nice. Yeah, they got them for the tri fives now. The '55s have them. It's not uh, a digital. Nice I'm, not, I'm not a digital gauge fan. I like I, I like watching needles go back and forth because it just. See, but that's the thing, Jim. Now the gauges look like an analog gauge, but yep. it's a digital movement because that's what yeah. this guy that I was gonna I'm gonna get on the show soon. I'll probably get see if I can get him on here too. He was a he was a GM tech back in the eighties, and his job was to, they, he worked in the unit shop where they would rebuild radios or anything electronic out of the car. And what he did is as he saw the writing on the wall where it was getting phased out, he started buying up equipment and he now has the, a replica of a GM unit shop at his house. Wow. And then, and then nice. became a shop. So he and he's who that's the guy who rebuilt my speedometer and my tachometer and certified them. So he we were talking about the tachometer, and I said, Yeah, now I have a digital, uh, I mean, I have, you know, electronic ignition. So the points movement wasn't going to work anymore. He says, Yeah, I can convert it. He goes, Or he goes, I could, I could put in the electronic movement. Because you'll never know, you won't know by looking at it because you're still going to have the analog sweep. But what happens is when you turn the key on, like on a modern car, that tack is going to sweep full and come. Yep. And I said, Oh, hell no. Funny how we all did that. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> hell no. I said, So what's the alternative? What will it take to rebuild this tack, you know, for an original movement? And it cost me $500. And Ouch. Wow. And I did it. I said, that's what it's going to cost. Hey, I'm only building this car once. That's what yeah, it it's your car. Do what you want. And my clock is going to be analog. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so now, like, like the you know, you can have an analog looking clock that has a quartz movement behind it. It's oh, yeah. And the same thing with the gauges. So uh, now, like in the GMs, you, you get a you get a virtual dash. In fact, I was on my friend's uh, in, his, in his Escalade. He, he with a button push, it could be digital. Even in my wife's cruise, there's analog and digital. You know, Lucia, you're, you're yeah. cruise that too. Yep. Um, but in the Escalade, you could change it. It would be analog sweep. It would be digital numbers. He had like four or five different patterns of gauges that would project on the, the dash screen. i tell you what, but, technology is is way above our heads. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, hey, hey, Lewis, on, yeah. on your dash, uh, I had a friend that his dad had one of those uh, Bonneville supercharged things. Mm -hmm. And his... I was around that your that vintage. I mean, you know, uh, uh, late nineties. I mean, uh, With yeah. The heads up display. But it came up on the da on the wind on the window. Yep. I mean, on the windshield. I'm Are looking you at it. Do the same thing. I think so. <laughs> I was looking at it today. <laughs> oh, because if your buddy had one of those things, I guess he, he had all that. But I don't know if you want to do. I don't know. But see, the problem is if I do that. Heads up, I have to have those gauges out of that car, and uh -huh. that and those gauges don't come apart, it's on a it's on a circuit board, yeah. yeah. So that's where I'm stuck. Well, you build around it, you got to solve that and just build around it, you know? yeah. Yeah, wow. a lot of a lot of figuring. Yeah. <laughs> the code digital is nice because, like I said, you can configure your package any way you want it, you know. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, any of you guys follow NASCAR, uh, the cup racing, no. yeah. 
Um, yeah, I don't know if you've seen uh, the in-car shots of the, the new dashboards that they're using. Uh, and there, there's four or five different displays that they use. Uh, one could be, you know, it'll, it'll look like old-style analog gauges. Uh, they hit a button, everything comes up digital. They hit a button, it comes up with the pit road dashboard, so you know how fast you're going for, for the pit road speed limit and stuff like that. Those are really trick. Well, they're using race but I thought I look at it. I was yeah. looking at those. I mean, put that into a you know like a hot rod or something like that. Three, four thousand dollars. Well, yeah, yeah. Race Pack does make stuff. If you look at you know all the all the guys running the the, the hot street cars and the race cars, they're using the Race Pack. I think it comes and in different again different configurations. Different everybody boxes. has a Race Pack. My buddy with his Drax has got a Race Pack in it. Good luck with the exam, Papa Squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. Getting late. All right, good night, Pop Squirrel. Yeah, I need to jump off too, man. It's getting get it to be that time. But hey, guys, I appreciate you guys coming to hang out with me. No problem. And, anytime, uh, anytime. Hey, we love hanging out, man. Ray, you gotta show um, Lewis the picture, man. Come on. How am I gonna do that? I have no idea. <laughs> picture of what? Well, we were at the Tobey Beach Car Show. It was Ray and Joe. I, I was there just hanging out. Where am I oh, playing yeah? in traffic shirt? And oh. I have no proof you of can't. it. You probably can't prove it to you because your hat covers your face. <laughs> oh. I think the picture's, hey, it's a shirt. Up, the pictures may be up on our website. I know uh, the web guy okay. got it, so they may be on our website. Yeah, I, I haven't looked myself. I haven't checked myself. Um, send, send it to me. I'll put it on the website. All right. Oh, cool. I'll be famous. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to order. I got to order some shirts myself. Hey, Seems coming of which, quick. I, I, uh, Lewis, I need a I need a new shirt. That shirt, unfortunately, came um, an XL tall. It Did looks it. like a dress on me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. Oh, gee, thanks. Everybody was commenting on that. Said, yeah, that guy in the dress looks really sharp. Man. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a little black dress, right? Fact with the hat. Black dress. There you go. <laughs> yeah, with the hat, right. <laughs> I gotta remember hey, hey hat. Jim, you're okay. And today's standing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on. Man. There's room for everyone, right? We have to be in <laughs> the There's room state. for everybody. Uh, yeah, this is there cool. it is. There we go. There we go. Yeah. What does it say on there, pimp? Yeah. <laughs> what does it say on there, pimp? <laughs> Not quite. Uh, uh, well, yeah, okay. it does say pimp. It says Barry Jackson on it. Yeah, pimp oh, delicious. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that. We went up to um, Mohegan Sun up in Connecticut in June. My Monk wife and I. We, yeah, we. Wow, that was that was fun. We had a great time the one day we went, watching all the stuff, looking at the cars. Some sweet, good stuff. Sweet. Good stuff there. So hey, yeah, make sure you tell everybody next week we'll have um, uh, John Gardner on. So that's gonna be good. He has a he has a couple things going on, man. He's teaching at a school, and you know he's doing doing some work. Yeah, he's. I've talked to him uh, on Facebook a couple times. Sounds like a really good guy. Mm -hmm. I told him he has to lighten up and, and unbutton his top collar a little bit. He's <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, he might be a little too square, but it's okay. We'll break him in. And he's from yeah. what, what's his company again? Company name? It's a uh, uh, garage head. Wait, motor, wait. Motor, motorhead garage. Motorhead, motorhead, garage. Yeah, motorhead garage. Yeah, motorhead garage. And uh, he's uh, he has really. I mean, his. I like his show because he has really good displays. You know, mm -hmm. talking about how electric. You know, the electrons flow and how relay. You know, he has a little little diagram for everything that he talks about and he's real really technical. good real technical yeah. guy yeah yeah he i told him he has to dumb it down a little bit but uh <laughs> you know, that's the problem that we have i'm always with my web guy he's always on my back listen he goes when you and joe are talking about stuff he goes you gotta dumb it down for guys like me who don't speak your your language your level i'm like you know what if we do that we'd stall like i don't yeah. know how to make certain things dumb i mean because let's face it as you learn things and you progress through um you know through your career you, you kind of start wanting to talk to people on the same level or, or above you so you can learn more mm -hmm. and and although you can teach below you i have no problem doing that it's just hard to go to the basics all the time we never we're never gonna get anything done i tell them, we only have an hour if we did that we could never talk about what the real right. subject is right and forget about Ray, what you, about diagnostics. You, know. you guys have enough listeners who are basically on the lower end of the scale, but they one they still listen. Two, they yeah. learn something because you guys are talking on that higher level. And you're answering questions, right? Yeah, and yep. you, you know, you and Joe, especially, you know, 
Joe more so because he sits there, he listens to the question because he's always dealing with people dumber than him. Mm -hmm. Especially the one time I called him. And, oh my God, the dumbest thing I made. But that's another story. <laughs> but, you know, he is, you know, a technical guy and he's always talking to people who are dumber than him, which is why he keeps breaking phones all the time. That's another story. Yeah. Another, another yeah. story. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he's actually pretty good at it, and he keeps it on that level, because you two, when you're going on on the higher level, people are getting it, and they're like, okay, I wonder what that means, and they'll look it up, and they'll come back, yeah. and say, okay, now I know what that's talking They well, can I'll research tell, it. Yep. I'll tell you something. We did something, because the web guy asked us, like, he'll always send me emails and, and calls afterwards, like, what was that when you said, you know, the BDM, what's it was, it was the big dumb machine, that was standard motors. So, we have a decoder on our website that are the yeah. acronyms of things that we say that aren't like in a regular language. So, if nice. you go, you go in the, under the blog tab, you'll see MMR decoder. And like we have the UD, Joe hangs out the UD, we it's called the undisclosed location. So, that's why it's a UD, it should be the ULU, you think, right? But it's yeah. they call mm -hmm. it the UD, it's, a thing. it's a UD, yeah, yeah. And then for a while, um. He was calling it, what was it, the, the CFG. And I was like, we had a, a abbreviated, that was like the clusterfuck garage. So we put the CFG up there and said, yo, CUD. So we have a decoder on there where people can go and, and look up the stuff that isn't normal. Yeah, that's cool. Because we're not normal. <laughs> we try. We try <laughs> yeah, to actually, but fun. Yeah, we try to actually uh, go the next step with people. So, you know. Right. All right, guys, you can stay on if you want, but I'm going to sleep. Uh, right. Yeah, I got a bail too. Five o'clock comes pretty fast. Yeah, real fast. I'm at oh, four thirty now. And the clock's gonna go back soon too. Jeez, the end of the month, God. Ugh. Yeah, it's dark already in the morning. Even at six. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Coming home and leaving now. Early. Yeah, I hate that. Yep. Hate that. All right, guys. I'll see you guys next week. And if anything pops up, I'll email everybody and let any, you know anything good happens. Very good. All awesome. right. Thanks awesome. A lot. All, All right, right, catch you later. Thanks. So long. All righty. Yeah, I'm going to bail too because I got to do some stuff and then get to bed. Very good. All right. Good night. Sounds great. Take good care. talking to you, Jim. Gotcha. Yeah, take care. See you on Sunday, Ray. All right, Jim. Yep. All right. Oh, man. Yes, sir. So, you got anything good going on? Uh, Well, in. What the hell is that? Another bug. Uh, yeah, I got you know some stuff at the shop. I never know what they're throwing at me, so it's I was like I said doing some work on a tow truck today. I think I'm gonna work on it again. Yeah, you know, I go from cars to tow trucks to flatbeds and like whatever they got, whatever they yeah. You know, they the, one of the, the one of the tow truck drivers, I had wired the block heater a year ago, so my buddy says to me, "Oh yeah, by the way, Ray says you know we need another plug for the for the truck." I'm like, "What do you mean?" Well, the other one got ripped off. I'm like, how'd it get ripped off? Because I don't know. They just said, <laughs> so I had to rewire the plug for the block heater today. I'm like, all right. Yeah, here we what, go. What type, what type of tow truck is it? It's a Ford, was it a seven, the seven point something liter diesel? Oh. It's a 90, 99 maybe. Yeah. Well, you know, the Ford ones, uh, you can actually replace the cords, they unplug from the block heater. Okay, I didn't get that far. What I actually told him, you know, now he was happy with just having the wire come through the grill so he could plug it into a cord. Right. I said, we should get like a nice little panel that has a flip up, you know, uh -huh. weather pad. So I sent them a couple links. I said, because I did the same thing on the flatbed. They just have like a thing on the side by the battery. I'm like, you know, we could do this so much nicer if we had the right stuff. Right. So I don't know. We'll see if he if he gets the stuff and I'll redo it. It's not because yeah, what when I did, redid the uh, my. Uh... Well, I was actually my truck, my F three fifty didn't have a block. It has a block heater, but it doesn't have the cord. Right. It's put in there from the from the plant, yeah. but it wasn't an option. Okay. And so all I had to do was just buy a cord and then snake it up in there and plug it into the side of the block and then have it come out. Right. And then on my on my wife's old excursion, her six zero. From all the years, the uh, plug had melted, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. on the end. And uh, the guy told me to test the block heater, you know, put an ohm meter on it and see where it was at. Yeah. And if it was okay, just replace the cord because, you know, it gets okay. it's okay. It's just the years, you know, because hers is a 2002, I think, or what, three or whatever it was. So, yeah. uh, but that was because I've seen them ripped out. 
I, yeah. I did it to my tool truck a couple times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you forget. That's what, you know, with the flatbed, I did this one, I guess, I forget. I don't know when the hell it was. It was last year. He says, yeah, I need you to, you know, re redo that. I'm like, what happened? He says, uh, I don't know. It stopped working. So I found the, the, the where the plug was, and then there was just this ball of electrical tape. I'm like, okay, let me start unraveling this. And I'm unraveling. And what they did, and I actually posted that, I think, on Twitter and Instagram on the website, and people were replying about it because it was like I did a before and after. I did how I found it and then how uh -huh. I it. You know, so I did everything, of course, with, you know, I saw it and I used shrink tubing and you know, I did it all right. But it's amazing what people do. I found that a lot, I mean, there's a lot of shoddy mechanical stuff, but people just do not understand electrical repair. It's scary. You know, and it's not hard. You know, it's no. really not hard to do. No, it isn't. I mean, that's like when I redid my kitchen, the upstairs was added on later uh, before I bought the house. But yeah, uh, when I redid the kitchen and when I took the ceiling light down, you know, in the kitchen, there was this blob of wire where they, that's where they hooked the upstairs to. Oh, like the junction. Yeah, it was like a junction. Yeah, I know. A lot of houses, like mine too, there's this junction box going through the house that they just tagged well, off another circuit. They didn't put the junction box. They just, oh, just the you know, wires. hooked oh, it to the God. wire and wrapped it up, and it was all melt. You know, Man. it was it was really yeah. bad. Uh, yeah, that is bad. So yeah, you got to got to re-engineer it. Now, now what do you do? Yeah, then I had to. So I have a buddy at the electrician. He had to come out, and we had a. I just put a bigger box in and just ran. You right. know, just did it right from the get go because you know the first house I had I was in Queens and I had a uh, I was changing a. A light i was putting i think a ceiling fan where a light was and you know convention is the power comes up to the switch and then breaks and goes to the light you break the break the hot so i had to switch off i think i had to switch you know i had to switch off and i'm up working on the light you know not feeling and all of a sudden bzz, i get zapped like whoa so, you know, I was switching off. they wired power to the light first and broke it on the return <laughs> leg like, who the hell would have ever thought you know it's backwards Oh, that's that's like putting your control ground using the power wire, right? Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> right. You know, I was just explaining to someone about relays uh, the other day, a buddy of mine, and I said, you know, we're talking about theory. And I said, you know, one of the nice things you can do is we're talking about kill switches. I said, this is what I did with my own car. I said, I just interrupted the negative, the, the ground terminal of the relay. And there's my kill switch. I just opened the ground. I said, it's never going to work because it doesn't have a ground. I said, and you're never going to arc because you're mm -hmm. on the ground side. I said, so there's like a dual safety thing there. You're not switching a positive load, you know? So, but again, yeah, it gets past a lot of, a lot of people and they just, just uh, oh, I see some scary stuff. So. Yeah. Did you, did, did the guy finish the Mustang? No. In fact, that's at the shop in, in, in Limbrook. That's the other shop. Now his Chevelle is at the shop where I'm at. And uh -huh. I know he wants to send the Chevelle over to where the Mustang is. They did a lot of work on it. I saw what my friend Steve has been working on it. Steve has called the show. You might have heard him. He was talking about his, he's got a Ford. Is it a probe or a, it's a Ford car. He was talking to Joe a couple of weeks ago about his O2. He had O2. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I was doing the work on the, he's a great body man. And he teaches yeah. a both season. Uh, and, and uh, he did all the hard metal repair in that car. I mean, Brian, there were parts of this car, like the Chevelle. Parts that I've never seen before that he's replaced. And then he showed me, he says, Ray, I got to show you something. He goes, these cars from the factory, the door, the, the gaps were always terrible. And the yeah, bottom yeah. a lot of times don't line up. And he took his, so he showed me the right side of the car. He goes, look at this. All the gaps are perfect and the lines matched up. We went to the left side. And it was, you know, the way it should be. And it was all off. And he goes, yeah, I'm going to work on that side next. He goes, I'm going to, you know, it means welding metal on the door to close a gap. You know, it's. He's doing all of that. Yeah, what was that guy, Joe Daddy's Garage? Have you seen that guy on, on Facebook and on uh, YouTube? Is it Joe? What was that guy? He's uh, he's up your way, and he's uh, re he's restoring a Mustang right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been watching him, and man, like he said, uh, he's, uh, you know, you put a quarter panel on and he's like, he'll, he'll measure the car. And of course you can't see both sides of the car at the same time. Right. So it's like, you don't even know there's it's off, you know, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you know, he'll measure and he goes, well, this, this is off X amount. And I'm like, 
man, you can't see that. And next thing you know, he's over there slicing and pieing and spreading out. I mean, it's like, holy crap, the stuff that he does is incredible. It's a personal conquest at that point. It's just do, yeah. do, do it right because you know it's right. Yeah. yeah. I know. So well, from what I, what I was told was the Chevelle was going to go over to there and the Mustang was going to come back over to me. And that's what happened last week. The, the, the Mike who owns the car said, well, he told his son he didn't want to get the Chevelle over. So I show up. He goes, yeah, my dad wants to get the Chevelle over to Limerick. Can we get it down and get it you know, rolling so we can – I said, well, what do you want to do? You know, what's the, What do you want to do? He goes, well, he wants to be able to drive it in and out of the shop. I'm like, well, that's going to be kind of hard to do. He goes, what do you mean? I mean the motor's in, transmission's in. But um, I know where the car is. I don't know where Brian is. There you are. Yeah. So I said, you know, motor, trailer in, everything is in, the exhaust is in. I said, but, you know, the car doesn't have any brakes. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I told you, Dad. This is the problem when you have too many projects going on at once. Uh -huh. I told him this months ago, maybe the beginning of the summer. Uh, maybe it was like the middle. Yeah, it was about the beginning of the summer. I was putting the dashboard in. And they had done all the metal work on that car, too. And really, you know, the hard metal. I mean, stuff that panels that don't get replaced, they replaced. But I was yeah. under the dash, and I was happened to be looking up, and I thought I saw light. And then I looked, and, and, and it's like in the inner cowl where it comes down, and it would like where the water would travel down by like where the torque box is. From inside the car, I was seeing light, and I looked with a flashlight, and yeah, there were rust holes in that section. Mm. So he had to be at the shop that day, and I called him. I said, okay, you got to look at this. So I know you had all the metal work done on this car already, but. I went in the car and I shot, shone a light through, and he's like, "What the hell is that?" I'm like, "Yeah, there's rust holes here that weren't repaired." Now, granted, you don't see them easily. You got to really look for them. I said, yeah. "Any water that comes up by the front of this windshield is now coming into your footwell. It's going to be on your carpet." So he said, "He goes, well, I'm going to be sending a guy down here from the other shop to do some work." He goes, "And I'll have him, I'll have him do that." Well, fast forward, that's that guy, the guy from Guyana, who who's who's at the shop. And every day that Chevelle hasn't been on the ground since then, because this guy's busy with all sorts of they forgot about it. You know, it just got forgotten. Mm -hmm. I didn't go and put the booster and the master in because it's right there. And I figured, yeah, you know, if he's gonna be welded, let's leave that stuff out. So now it's like, okay, we gotta go back and he's gotta get to, he's gotta repair that. And then I'll, I'll probably see the Mustang again. Wow. But I had the dash apart. I changed the circuit board on the back for him. And then while I had it apart, I'm like, you know, all these lenses, and it's kind of cool. The lenses have a a, a, a convex shape to yeah, them. Yeah, like a bubble of – yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is the bubble faces back, so you look at the, the concave side. Right. I, I kind of thought that was interesting. So I said, you know what? I said, send these to the other shop. I said, they're all body men over there. Somebody's got to be able – someone's got to be really good at polishing plastic. Said, have someone polish these and send them back to me, and they did. But now, when I was putting the, the gauges back in, a couple of the screw holes, the towers are just so soft, the screws won't even hold in there anymore. I said, Okay, we gotta decide what do you want to do? Do you want me to epoxy them? Do you want JB? Well, do you want to buy a new dash assembly? You know, the, the gauge housing, you know, your call. What do you want to do? So, I still see it, it's sitting at the shop, the old one's sitting there, so I don't know if he's, I don't know what's happened, but yeah, sometimes I'm the last you to know. You can uh, uh, couldn't you use like a hot glue gun and put it fill the hole in glue. Yeah. That way it doesn't. I mean, JB Weld scares me because if you ever need to take it apart, it ain't well, coming back apart. You know, JB Weld though, you can drill and you can tap it. Oh, so that's true. You can. That's so true. there's a couple. You know, the problem is it's it's a, it's the plastic tower and it's already split. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to like put something around it to band it again. Uh, you know, but you you know that stuff is small. It's I don't know if it's even worth playing with. I mean, you could probably leave those two screws out, put it in, and who's going to, you know, it'll probably never. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that that housing is available, but God knows what it would cost. I don't know. You know, it's it's probably a couple hundred bucks for that. It's the full dash enclosure for the 69. So, yeah. It's a big piece. But. Yeah. I don't know. Unless you find, unless you get lucky and find some. Somebody, you know, just want to get rid of this stuff. Yeah. If that one's any better than the one you have, you know, it's going to be the yeah, same age. You know? Yeah. And that plastic, after a while, it just, it dries out. You know, the, the plastic dries out, loses its, you know, it just gets brittle and real. Yeah, I know. Well, like I said, the, some of the stuff that I got, like I said, you know, 
trying to keep it from, like you said, drying out or getting brittle or whatever. It just, it just happens. <coughs> I'll tell you something. I just read, there's a magazine I read. I subscribe to it. Uh, I might have a copy of it. It's called Auto Restorer. <coughs> it's a paper publication. So it's not a glossy magazine style. Uh, a few years ago, they went color, which is nice. And it's all about, you know, it's it's all about the hobby. It's just how it's all about rest. Yeah. Auto Restorer. Oh, yeah. And they'll do stuff from like, you know, the 30s and they have new stuff. And, but, you know, there's like this one had all about rebuilding a quadruject carburetor. So there's a lot of nice mm. stuff in here. And I, I actually contribute. I just wrote a, um, a piece that they're going to run next month uh, as a reply to one of the things. So it gives me space when I, when I, uh, when I need. <clears throat> but anyway. Yeah. I like the, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, it's a grassroots thing, and it's 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 a good couple of publication. But uh, I just read a piece today in the current magazine, and there was a guy who has a small radiator shop. I don't remember where he's at, Midwest maybe. And it was like his father's and grandfather's, and they still do it the old. He actually has a set of tools where he'll take and he'll remove the dents on a top tank of a metal radiator to kind of restore it for a guy instead of wow. replacing. So this the original numbers are still in there and all. Yeah. Kind of and Chrysler stuff, Mopar stuff. But, you know, he talked about all the different strategies with radiators, and he said something, he wrote something that I never heard before. He says when you, he, he, he restored a guy's radiator, cost him a few hundred bucks, and the guy left it in a barn for a year. And he said, then when he put it back in the car, he had a problem with it. I don't remember what the problem was. He says, that's, you can't store a radiator that way. I'm thinking, well, in a barn might not be the best. And then he, he blew my mind. He said, if you have a, a new or a redone radiator that you're not going to use, the way that it says it dries out, it actually will dry out inside. And from all the chemicals that were in it, you'll start getting oxidation on the tubes. He said, you should store the radiator full of antifreeze. Wow. I'm like, I'm like I've never heard of that. I'm like, damn. You know, I mean, now it's going to be heavy and you got to be able to cap all the ends. And oh, my yeah. God. I never heard that before. So, I don't know. I guess I don't know. Now I don't know if that's his his belief or if it's really based in science or, or what. But I'd never heard that before. Yeah, I've never heard that either. That's crazy. Because what do you do about the radiator sitting on a part shelf? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I guess those you know they 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 typically would turn over a little faster. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's stuff. I know there's stuff sitting on shelves. You know, for years and years and years. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I never heard that. That may be I, like the ultimate best way to do it, but yeah, if you had the room for it, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine having a space dedicated for a radiator to lay out. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the thing I thought of is, um, you know, years ago I had a, a Monte Carlo and I had done an, a, an engine swap and everything, and I bought a brand new Harrison four core, you know, brass uh, brass uh, radiator, copper brass. And used it in the car. And when I when I finally got rid of the car, I had to cut it up and, and get rid of it because it was, um, you know, scrapped it. One of the things I saved was the radiator. You know, I flushed it out with fresh water. But I have it down here in my basement. It's been down here for 20 years. And yeah. it, that's the first thing I thought of was like, oh, is it in good shape? Did I kill that radiator? Is it going to be worth it? You know, is it going to be, you know, did I save it for no good reason? Because, and I, and I don't know, but it made me think of that thing. So. Yeah, that's crazy. I had a I had a good find. Uh, what was it? Two weeks, three weeks ago, I walked into one of my shops and they had a um, 60, uh, 66 Mustang GT with a, a K motor, a two eighty nine oh. hypo, nice. and the guy wanted to put a new radiator in it, and he had gotten some four core radiator, I don't know from where, and uh, so I, I started looking and the old radiator was, it did have a leak in it, but it had the, the proper numbers. It was original radiator wow. and it had the numbers on the t top tanks, you know? Right. And I, I happened to be there kind of late and the guy was picking the car up and I told him I had one and blah, blah, we're talking. And I said, you're going to take those old parts? And he said, no. And I said, well, you don't mind uh -huh. if I take your, <laughs> and he said, no, I don't, I don't care. And Excellent. I was like, man. And of course, the guy at the shop was like, why are you taking a bad radiator? And I said, 
man, those numbers are worth a million bucks to yeah. somebody. You reuse that tank, absolutely. Yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, it was funny that, uh, of course, you know, my wife just rolls her eyes when oh, I come yeah. walking in. And I got this radiator and I'm walking down into the office and she's like, and what the hell is that for? <laughs> It's going to be with you soon, huh? I need a new radiator. <laughs> yeah. But that was good. Finding stuff like that, especially for free, is kind of hard, you know? Yeah. Oh, Yeah, definitely. Especially, especially in these days. Well, so. we're, we're at that point where the guys like us know what that stuff is worth, you know? And, and now we're holding on to it. We want top dollar. And there's a whole bunch of guys behind us that have no idea. You know, it's yeah. just like old stuff. Just like if we ran into Model A stuff or, you know, Duesenberg stuff. It's like, what the hell's that? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of people who just look at it as like just old crap. But I tell you something, with the way parts are, I I'll tell you a quick story. I want to adjust the wheel bearings on my Fiat the other day because I noticed, you know, those little things. I'm coming up the driveway and I just heard a noise. And I said, I bet you the wheel bearings are just they need a little bit of tightening because they. Yeah. So I did the one side and I said, okay, you know, I, the, the calipers have have slide wedges. To, that, that's it's a stupid system, but that's what the car has. So I hate taking them off because it's a pain in the ass. But I did it, and I went to the left side, and it was my own fault. But what I, the way I take out the inner bearing, um, and I got to remember now, I only have to do, I should only do this when I'm replacing the bearings, not when I'm servicing the bearings. I'll take the front bearing out and then put the nut back on, and take the right. rotor and, and pull it. Bang bang. Well, one side, fine. this side, the, the second side, I took it out, and the and the inner bearing now didn't want to spin and and on the back side of the bearing the big side there was a, a spring a coiled spring inside the shell of the bearing that i think was like a locking mechanism this is an skf bearing this is mm -hmm. you know because so, i had put them in the car when i rebuilt it when I, when I got it so it's all it's aftermarket stuff and i walked to the auto parts store and i said here i need one of these and i had, had the number and all and he's like dude i can't i, I don't have this number i'm like what it's just a, in a wheel bearing He's pulling stuff off the shelf. Nothing would fit. At the auto parts store, he actually fired up the computer. He went to Rock Auto. He goes, Rock doesn't even have it. I'm like, wow, if you, you're checking Rock at the auto parts store, that's pretty wow. good. So he says, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's a bearing place that we have. He says, you could try them. I subsequently searched. And the, re the, the restoration places have bearing sets that you can buy. But I, needed, I would have needed something right away. So I cleaned it, and I'm looking at it. And I said, you know, He's this guy's an old timer. He's been around as long as us, even a little longer. He said, I've never seen the spring in there before. I said, I have on certain bearings, but I don't remember what. So I'm in my garage looking at it and I said, you know, what does that spring do? It must just capture and keep it together. So it was already damaged. I took a pick and I removed it. And it's just mm -hmm. a round, you know, a round spring. It fits in. And then I could see if I pulled the end of bearing, I could probably pull the bearing apart and let oh. the so I think it was a locking device, but I'm thinking about it. I'm like, okay, once I re-grease this and put everything back together, it can't come apart because it's all together. It's so kind of, well, it's like a cone shape, right? I mean, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like a Timken wheel bearing. It's a tapered inner bearing. Yeah. So that's what I did. I took the spring out, greased it, put everything back together. <laughs> but I said, made me think like, man, if you, if I can't get a wheel bearing, you know, today that's saying something and these guys the store i use you 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 hear me talk about it on the radio show yeah it's a it's an old school hard parts store so you can get the tough stuff from these guys you know they're not air freshener it's just an air freshener and a windshield wiper you get the I hard know. part and the guy that owns the store is like 70 and he's a pack rat i mean i have a good rapport with these guys so they let you know i can go in behind the counter i can go in the back i can search for stuff i help myself to if i need break little stuff it's right. easier and i've been i was back there over the summer and, I, and in one of the aisles it was just packed with boxes of fell pro gaskets so i said to my buddy i said hey Daryl, i said what's all the fell pro these weren't here last time i was oh yeah Dwayne, he's the owner Dwayne, he found he, he'll, he'll like find stores going out of business and he just buys inventory he goes yeah. so he bought some complete fell pro inventory I'm like, damn, whose job is it going to be to catalog that? He goes, that shit's going to sit there in boxes for probably years. <laughs> so I know it's there if I need it, but I'm going to have to go through the boxes and find it, you know? Yeah, that's no crazy. Go but he does that. He'll do that with, with – because he knows, like, you know, he may have a find a, a load of, of bearings, you know, and he'll just – he'll buy it. You know, it'll be like a – Yeah. A load of bearings yeah, we don't, we don't have any – I mean, uh, 
everything here is too uh, generic or, you know, commercialized, you know, yeah. like your AutoZone, you know, we don't have a, a good old auto parts store anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's really a shame. Last week, my buddy at a, a local shop, he's, um, he, his brother-in-law works for a company that makes the uh, ductless ACs. I have those in the house. And he got me a couple of remotes a few years ago. I needed some more. So I asked him again for me. He called me. He says, yeah, the remote's here. Come pick them up. So I go down. And in the first bay is a 65 T-Bird. So I kind of walk over to it because they're under the hood. And I'm looking. And they didn't want to start right. And it's smoking. And they're playing with the carburetor. And I'm like, yeah, what's going on? Oh, you, and my buddy Barry says, dad, tells me, you need a carburetor. It's one of the 4,100 motocrafts, which is kind of yeah. like half a Holly. It's it's like a right. Holly. And, so long story short, I get the job to rebuild the carburetor. And I said to him, the biggest problem is going to be if I can get the kit. Because I've had a lot of problems with kits. And Colvin had it. They had the kit on the shelf. It cost me $35. So um, that's, you know, it, it, you get hit. I did, I did need one for a two-barrel Rochester a couple of years ago that I couldn't get anywhere. Go figure. But. That 4100 had me guessing because it's got a, a, an accelerator pump in the front like a Holly, and it has mm -hmm. a bigger diaphragm on the rear of the carburetor with a lever and a rod that goes to the secondary throttle shaft. But that doesn't tie to the primary throttle. Sh the primary throttle. So it's not like a progressive linkage. The only thing I can think is vacuum must j just pull. A, a, they must rely on airflow. For the signal because there's no there's no um vacuum vacuum uh canister like on a holly like on a 4160 or something right right uh -huh. and i didn't have enough if you know he sent me some information from his fsm but there was nothing that really laid out how that worked and i'm thinking okay is there a piece missing you know because that's one of the things i talked about like who the hell what kind of screwdrivers did guys have i mean obviously this thing's been around since 65 yeah I had all straight slot screws that were all you know mangled how the hell do you do that i mean if yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying i mean if you got a yeah if you got a screwdriver you prime paint can lids with me but you're a mechanic you got screwdrivers right i mean how does this happen <laughs> yeah that 4100 that 4100 uh was the the uh, on the 289 225 horsepower motor that's what i had i had i had two of those and uh the sheet for it right here yeah they, this was, was a 390, by the way. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I had. Uh, 66 to 68. It's on the 289. It says G-E or T-E. Whatever that means. But, yeah, they listed on the 289. And the 352. And the 390. Yeah. And the four. That's, that was the best carburetor. I had two of them when I was running the two fours. Uh, that was the best because I started out with uh, the six hundred, you know, the six fifties, and I had six hundreds, and right, I could man, I, I could get that car to, uh, and I had a hell of a cam. I mean, the uh, I don't know where my cam sheet. I just had it. I just saw it. Uh, really? You know, my cam was. I mean, it was uh, a Lenati special ground. Actually, I I called Lenati to try to get the camshaft, see if they still made it. Yeah. And the the kid or the guy that was on there was like, uh, where did you come up with that part number? And I said, <laughs> from the cam sheet. And he goes, I got to get one of the old guys. Yeah, That's like 30 years. That's older than me, you oh, know, okay. I mean, the cam sheet. But uh, he goes, that makes you feel good, right? Yeah, it was funny because even the guy, the old timer was like, where the hell did you come up with that part number? Let me ask and, you this. Uh, how were how they configured on the intake? Because you couldn't put those front to back. They're, too, they're long. It's a long carburetor. Uh, that was that Offenhauser 360 that I had. So were they side by side? They're all set like this. I mean, they were. And yeah. I mean, when you open the motor up, the 289 is not that big of a motor. No, but no, that no. intake was huge. That big old Offenhauser 360. Right. And they were off like this. They were yeah. off, you know, sitting like that. The linkage must have been wild, huh? And uh, and I, for years, I've saved the. I had the linkage. Yeah, and it was like I a bell finally, crank. A bell uh, crank. In, it was like a bell crank in the middle that would it work. Had the a, yeah, it had one in the front. You know, like uh, one one part, and it had like uh, three arms. Yeah, because you hook the throttle, you hook the gas that pedal on the one, right? And, and two, it, and right, and it pulled one way, yeah. and one went the other. You got a picture of that setup? 
on the car? Well, the problem is now, after all these years, I've lost half the linkage. Oh, but do you have a picture of it? And that's what I was talking to that Offenhauser yeah. guy. If there was any way, I right. mean, I would love to find the rest of the linkage for or get it, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, the it's out in my shed. I I I finally moved it out there, and uh-huh. uh, I hope I hope when I clean up the shed, I can find the rest of the linkage. Yeah, maybe but, in a box um, or something, you know. I, well, I got. Sh- I got stuff everywhere, right? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just as bad. I'm, I'm right, just yeah. as bad as you, man. I, I understand. I was just thinking <laughs> the other day. You know, I was working on an older car, and and uh, we were talking about older Pontiacs. I'm like, you know what? I have a tri power for like up to '59, the early motor tri power. But what I did is I had taken the carburetors off years ago. I took them all apart. And I put all the pieces for each carburetor in like a margarine tub. I know over the years that like they're in a box, the margarine tubs probably crack. I'm thinking I should just take them and just put them all back together and bolt them on the intake. At least it's all in one piece now. Yeah. You know, I gotta do that. But now I gotta remember where all the stuff is. I know it's here, so you know it's and I have another tripe out of it. I have the one that would fit on my car. The same thing. It's all taken apart. I cleaned everything. You know, yeah. when you were talking about that, uh, when I was listening to that guy talking about the uh, roller, the bead roller thing, the yeah. like can opener. Right. Man, I when you get your when you get it, I need it because yeah. when yeah, I, I have a hood that I cut when I was running the uh, uh, Hillborn on when I had the Hillborn and I just cut and I I used to run the like uh, rubber hose Four-inch around the edge yeah. and I, and for years I said, man, yeah. I just want to roll this over yep. 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 and yep. I was like, I a buddy of mine. You get in touch uh, with him. He may just send you on it, and you know you could maybe work out a deal. You sell them off 